All right. Well, welcome to uh, Clive Barker podcast, episode 329. We're returning to our Barker themed Dungeons and Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77. After the destruction of Midian, after the unraveling of the fugue, after the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions, the Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. left the group they had battled and negotiated their way through the nine levels of gregorius's false hell where they became in uh, which had become infested with real denizens of the gulfs uh, squad 77 uh, chernovir specifically made a pact with gaustus the ice devil uh, blinded and maimed by the mysterious cassius briar wants revenge and needs one more soul before their pet the giant spider willem can return home to the gulfs and so you guys have uh, stepped into the um, into the the express transport, and you're headed back to your home base in Isordorex. All right, and and, um, and I think we already rolled for this last time. You guys made it safely through the Innovo, uh, and you arrive back, and and uh, and you see that that um, Bentley is waiting there for you. And he says, "Hey, what is that? You've you've picked up a creature from the Innovo." He's pointing at, uh, at, and he starts pointing his gun at at Willem. Hey, it's fine, Bentley. It's fine. It's uh, I'll explain it to you later. This is this is uh, we picked this up in our last adventure, and uh, it's fine. It's safe. Well, uh. That's that's even weirder than the talking bird, but okay. Yeah, I know, I know. It's <laughs> and twice it's, as fun, eight times the fun. <laughs> <laughs> that remains to be seen. <laughs> I I put my uh, I put my soul on the line, and uh, yeah, I'm. You know, we're we're going to be. Uh, my brother has a debate that is happening with Cassius, so. We're we're gonna think about that. How we're gonna do that? He he wants to talk to you about that. Uh, he's he's headed headed over here now. He should be here in about an hour. Okay, sure. Uh, I guess we can we can have breakfast. Well, I like the sound yeah, of breakfast. Yeah. It, it's it's uh it's it's nighttime now, but uh, if you're hungry, oh, we can eat. I know breakfast. that the the time difference has probably messed you up, and you've been gone for several days. Yeah, we've been uh, Dominion lagged, I guess. <laughs> I, understandable. Uh, so, what have you been watching? What movies have you been watching? Uh, the Thomas Crown Affair again. Yeah, Wait, it's all you got. You well, never get yeah, told. I, yeah, <laughs> but I didn't want to watch Stepmom again. <laughs> Oh, Bentley, you and your VHS tapes. I'll bring over a copy of Halloween 3 for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> they keep giving me they keep giving me movies from uh, 1998. Specifically. <laughs> oh. We'll get to the bottom of that. All right. So, I'm just going to take care of my stuff and change my outfit and uh, wait for my brother. 
And um, Bentley starts preparing some waffles. Awesome. Is there anything anybody else wants to do while you're waiting? Definitely squish Willem into a seat at the table in the kitchen. (laughs) Okay. Because if I remember correctly, it's kind of a cramped kitchen. And so just stuff, you know. Yeah. This is where you sit. And then I'll (laughs) sit on the table. We'll have to introduce him to waffles. <laughs> I hope he's not in the diabetic. Thomas Crown affair. He's never going to want to go back. We won't even have to do this mission. <laughs> That's right. it's like, screw the golf. I'm staying here. You can just live in the basement. <laughs> we got Disney movies. What? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have anything like this in the golf. Yeah. So he, he, you do notice that while he's kind of making stuff in the kitchen, he keeps kind of uh, nervously looking over at Willem. Uh, he doesn't really want to turn his back on him. Okay, so and so 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 here's what happened, Bentley. I promise you an explanation. Um, that spider creature is called Willem, and we picked Willem up on the ninth level of hell um, in Africa. You're not really making the case, Chodavir. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, Jonathan. I know, but you know, I got it. I promised him an explanation, so. This is what I'm, and so I made a deal um, with one of the Gulf's uh, demons. Uh, oh, to, oh, that doesn't sound good. I know it's terrible, but I have to follow through with my promise, and um, I think we'll, I think we'll be all right. So right now they're an ally, so they're just here to make sure that I fulfill my promise, and. Uh, I feel like what you're is, leaving out some important information, yeah, Trudevere. Yeah, what, what is your end of the deal? Uh, that's That was deliberate. Um, I guess it's a hard thing, but I promised uh, the Gulfs that we, we would uh, provide them with uh, a soul uh, because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to leave because the portal to be closed, it involved <clears throat> switching two souls for... Of three souls for the three creatures of the gulfs that were going to be sent back. So I closed the portal. It's all good. Uh, there were two souls, two damned souls that we offered, and then there was one soul left. So I put my soul on stake here. Um, so that's. Don't worry about it. I, I'm, I'm taking Wait, care if, of it. If you put, if you, why didn't they take you right then? Well, because I promised them I would get them another bad guy soul. Um, equal or lesser value yeah <laughs> something oh. like that yeah let's say that uh so who do you have in mind uh well you know um we deal with a lot of bad people so eventually i'm sure that someone will come up um that we can offer to the gulfs um i know it's not a <laughs> It's not exactly something I'm proud of, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we had to make a deal. Otherwise, Ralph would have been taken. And I want to, you know, I like Ralph. I don't want him to to sacrifice himself for the team. I think we lost enough uh, Jericho squad agents already. So, I mean, the whole squad of, over there at in Africa was destroyed, eradicated. Only Tressa was left. So... Well, it would be easy for me to get judgmental, but I can't. I can't because I wasn't there. So, yeah. Um, I imagine you had some there. tough decisions to make. What was Sorry, that? What was that? The... I said you're leaving something out, dear. They didn't want no part of me. Uh, yeah. Well, why are you guys so intent on? on okay, I guess you know. I I. I I didn't say who I promised because I'm not sure if if it's a good idea so far. But um, listen, I I don't like. Cassius. I think waffles are a great idea. Yeah, you don't need yeah. to explain they're, yourself, Chodavir. They're almost yeah, ready. Yeah, those waffles Willem's almost with done. Me. <laughs> Willem's fine. Willem's not going to eat anybody. Yeah, it's fine. Believe it's me, if fun. he wanted to eat us, he would have. Yeah. I Trust think he's pretty him. beholden to his masters, so we should be okay. His How masters you- want one more soul. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but so far the portal is closed, and Willem is the only one left behind. So we can deal with the situation when the opportunity arises. 
Uh, yeah, I mean that that sounds worse than killing someone. But well, I mean, do you have any assholes in mind, Bentley? You want to get rid of? I mean, not really. Oh. Not like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> what about pancake and bustle? Just both of them. Oh, we. They're turning their lives around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll believe mm. it when I see it. Yeah, I, we had an adventure, me and Musette, we had an adventure on the road that I would probably disprove that they're changing their life around, but okay, that's fine. You mean after the after we recruited them? Yeah, I went on, you know, you you remember when we first got here, um, we had fought a Nulianak and some cultists, and then those guys try to rob us in the middle of the road, but uh, it's all but good. That, yeah, that was before before I met them, though. Okay, all right. So they're turning their life around, so that's fine. I think so. They're they're helping us procure uh, goods for the store. Sure, sure. I'm sure I, they. I don't trust them. Just yeah. be careful. <laughs> okay. And like I said, we can always just. Throw them the gulfs in case anything oh, happens. Wow. Um, that seems harsh. It's a you're, harsh world. You're so good natured. You're so good natured, Bentley. I mean, I, I think it's the wholesome movies that you watch. Well, honestly, I've been feeling pretty down uh, learning these things that we've been learning about Cassius. Uh, I thought he was my friend. Yeah, Cassius mm -hmm. sucks too. <laughs> well, the evidence seems to point that way, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's got that that you know the 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 Aboriginal children thing. I mean, there was a Nullianak. I mean, he, he did kidnap my brother. I still think he was very connected to that. So I don't know. I'm looking forward to the debate the and and to see what happens. So uh, I'll I'll talk to my brother when he gets here. Yeah, that sounds good. And he, at this point, he, he uh, starts bringing plates of waffles over and you can kind of help yourselves. Oh, yeah, waffles. waffles. I love Fifth Dominion food. Yeah, I've gotten kind of addicted to it. <laughs> Don't have too much syrup, Bentley. It, it, it's almost as if I've started to forget the food that we have here in the Second Dominion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite restaurant in the Second Dominion? Hmm. Well, there's a place, and I forget the name, that has uh, that has pretty good ice cream. So I think, oh, they're just down the road. I don't know why I forgot their name. <laughs> okay. If they're just I, down I, the road. You don't need to remember their name. Yeah, yeah you just walk over check there. The dust yeah. dumpsters out and give you a full report. Yeah. <laughs> and um so while you're eating drovo arrives um he comes in he comes down the steps and uh sits down with everyone and he says i'm glad to see that you're all safe yes drovo uh we had some tough you know adventures uh, in africa and the fifth but uh i'm looking forward to uh to the political event that you're going to be a part of. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about that. So there's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, of course, you're all invited. Um, for those of you who have not been to one of these before, uh, the debates here in, this, in, uh, in the Reconciled Dominions, I guess they're all reconciled now, but um, are a sort of a town hall affair. So you have an audience, uh, you have the VIP audience, which you will all be members of, excluding you, Sir uh, Bird. Mm -hmm. uh, but I imagine you can find a place to sit. Um, so so you're all invited, anyway. and, and every VIP member is allowed one question to one of the, uh, uh, to one of the the uh, debaters right so one of the candidates mm -hmm. um so that will help quite a bit but there, there's one one uh, one little thing i think that is throwing a wrench into this this whole process and making me rethink things uh cassius approached me yesterday and okay. told me 
that if I go through with the debate, uh, he's going to expose Squad 77 and the Jericho organization as a whole. What do you mean expose? We haven't done anything wrong. Do you mean give away our identities? He would uh, accuse us of spiatits, spies, what? being spies for the Fifth Dominion. That's ridiculous. That's, uh, I mean, we're established here. So, okay. That would probably put us in a bad light. Um, but in any case, we'll be there to offer you protection. It doesn't seem right to give in. Uh, so I wanted your advice. Well, hmm. what do you guys think? Throw Cassius in the, in, in the hole. I There's mean, the hole? why don't we just give them Cassius his soul? Well, we got to get him first. Well, let's go get him. <laughs> yeah, but this is a well, very public forum. I mean, yeah. it's not like you can just go and get him. I mean, you could try to intercept him before or after. Or we could just plan a very dramatic exit for the debate. Well, one thing we have now that we didn't before is a giant spider. I only am understanding about a quarter of what you're saying. But Trovo, how would he expose us to, to say that we were spies for the fifth? He doesn't have any proof of any of that. I mean, why he, would he, we be spying? Who would we be spying for? He knows Jericho squad better than any of you. Excusing Bentley. Yeah. But still, and the I organization. What proof would we have? Would he have to uh, back his claims? Genevieve, honey, you don't un seem to understand politics. You yeah. see, you don't actually have to have any proof, just an accusation, and that's good enough. Right, right. I guess we can't just say it's fake news. And he, um, he knows enough about Jericho that he could make anything plausible. Well, so I, I still want to be there at the debate with you. Um, I'm sure that he's going to have the Aboriginal children with him and for support. Um, we also have proof against him, I guess. You know, we also have a lot of stuff. Like we discovered that he did not close the portal in, uh, you know, Gregory's Folly. He actually left it open. And that's why he was uh, allowing the gulfs to, to bleed into the Fifth Dominion. I had to go in and close that. And, and he lied to, he lied to, uh, to Tressa, you know, he lied to her. He said the portal was closed. And we also have a counterclaim that he's been behind a lot of CD stuff. Well, then we better accuse him first because hmm. otherwise it sounds, it's going to look like we're reacting. Difficult to prove. Well, well, I talked to Tressa. She was there. I mean, we could. Tressa we, would be a witness to 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 uh, prove the the actions of of Cassius were not in good faith. Um, yeah, is Tressa think, busy right now, or can we call her and maybe get some more information? Because she did deal with him directly. We. Yeah, Bentley says. We could we could call her and and ask her to come over if we want. Yeah, I guess I guess the the thing is, if he blames Jericho Squad of being uh, spies, he would just wave and dismiss Tressa as being part of a conspiracy. So we do need to make our case properly if we are to accuse him of anything or make a counterclaim to that. Um. I'm sure he's not, not if he never says anything. I mean, we don't, we don't need right. to debate him at all. Like, yeah. Well, Drovo, what are you going to debate him for? Well, no, he's threatening to expose us, but I mean, there's, you mean, you mean, you mean, what are my, what are my talking points? Yes. What are your talking points going to be about? Well, 
Uh, as you know, uh, this, the open seat is for the representative of the First Dominion, and that's larger, largely a figurative spot, but it's also sort of the moral compass of, of the, uh, the council. Right, mm -hmm. it's this, the most spiritual of all the dominions, and um, in that respect, uh, it should be held by a Uredimek. Right, Ured, um, it was vacated by a Uredimek when she died, um, and you know, uh, the, the the person who filled that seat was um, uh, Kulis Su Arai. Uh, she was she was old even you know even thirty years ago. So she just recently died, and that's what caused the seat to be open. But uh, this is a sort of a this is a relatively new government uh, since the fall of the autarch. Um, but the idea is that you have one representative of each dominion, and uh, and they form a council of the Imagica. Right. Right. Yes. Um, well. Um... So what you're saying is that Cassius is threatening if we attend that meeting that he would draw accusations on the forum about us being spies for the fifth. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's what he said. He would tell everyone about Jericho and that we were there to spy. Which well, is, it's, it, it's a sort of half truth, right? I mean, the, fifth, the, the Jericho Squad 77 is here. Uh, it's a Fifth Dominion organization and they're here to watch to make sure that there are no threats against the fifth dominion well, but but uh, we have the freedom jericho has the freedom right to to look at all kinds of threats to anyone right i mean it's if it if it if it's a democratic process we have the right to be there it seems like he's just trying to blackmail us with false accusations which right off the bat tells me He's not to be trusted. So I would say let's go there because remember, if he has the support or he is behind the Aboriginal children and he also has a Nullianac along, who knows what he could do, right? So we should be there to make sure he's already tried to force you once to sign a document saying you'd renounce all political activity. So clearly he's going to stop at nothing to to enforce his way. So he's definitely not, you know, to be trusted. So I would say let's go there anyway. If he launches any accusations, we can defend ourselves in any way we can. And uh, I mean, we're here to protect people. We're not here to spy on anybody. It doesn't make any sense that 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 he would, you know, tell us that we're spies for the fifth. We've been reunified with the fifth. You know, I mean, what? There's commercial trade and relations with the fifth. I mean, I don't know what he would claim the purpose of spying would be for. So I say we go. Okay, I, I'm with you. Um, Bentley. Well, it's not an either an either or option. I mean, it's not just go and deal with his accusations or not go. I mean, we can go and he doesn't know we're there. We can make it so he never gets to the debate in the first place. I mean, we, we have other mm -hmm. options. Bentley kind of looks up from his waffles and says, I have a hard, I, I have a hard time not thinking that he's bluffing. I think he wouldn't do that to us. Well, Bentley, I know you have a very optimistic, good nature. Uh, but in this case, I mean, look, the evidence is really mounting against Cassius, right? I mean, he left the Gulf's portal open in Earth on the 5th. He, he is connected to the Aboriginal children who try to kill us. They try to kill us. They try to kidnap my brother and force him to sign, you know, uh, a blackmail, you know, document so he would <clears throat> be off the political race. I mean, it, he's very mysterious so far, and I don't trust him. I mean, he's not a part of the Jericho squad anymore. He's doing his own thing now, and he's got his own agenda. So I'm sorry, but Cassius is not a good guy. Well, um, maybe uh, now that Ridley is coming, maybe she can, uh, she's coming a day early. Maybe she can help sort this out. Uh, and um, and, at the, and then when, when, he, when Drovo says this, Bentley goes, oh, uh, I forgot to tell you that uh, 
uh, Ridley Masters is coming. Uh, she's the representative of, of the fifth and also kind of a high up in our organization. Okay, that's good. I'm so Wait, she'll so be here. She'll be here tomorrow. In so the, the representative of the fifth is a high ranking Jericho official. Yeah, they don't know that. So maybe they've got a point. I mean, <laughs> they don't have a point. This, the Jericho squad has completely infiltrated every aspect of the interaction between here and the fifth minion. Well, uh, am I a spy? I just kind of want to look at uh, them. Let, I'm, politics are a little bit over my head, but <laughs> but let me put it to you this way. Um, we're not the baddies, guys. Most people in the Fifth Dominion don't even know that the rest of the Imagica exists. So the pool of people to represent the Fifth Dominion is a very small group of people. Whatever, they could just grab some kid, make, make him eat some acid and tell him it was all a bad dream. I like that idea. <laughs> uh, I would also like some acid. That, that sounds like murder. As it won't murder oh, you. It's a Fifth Dominion thing. Next time I come back, I'll uh, I'll show you. Oh, this is different. Bentley, what, can you, you want to make me? people? I eat just acid? exposed myself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys over there. Uh, I it's mean, great. I flew to the sun. <laughs> I mean, Zoe, you're you're a good person. I mean, you're not a spy. I mean, obviously, and and Bentley. Just the fact that Cassius is threatening my brother to to lie about Jericho is is pretty much proof that he's not he doesn't have any good intentions, right? I mean, come on. Do you, do you believe? Do you accept what Cassius wants wants to say about Jericho that we're spies for the Fifth Dominion? I mean, come on, Bentley, snap out of it, man. He's he's not he's not no, your friend. I, I don't be, I don't believe that we're spies, but I. Uh... Well, it depends on how you look at it, right? Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say. Sorry. We are and we aren't. Uh, it, 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 yes, we're spies, but we're not. We, we're not a threat. We're not. Okay, how do you say we're spies? We're not spying for anybody. We're not part of any conspiracy. We're we're protecting this world, right? I mean, I've heard of the Jericho Squad now that I've had a chance to talk to people. It looks like we we just kind of help solve situations right um and from what i've understood understood by looking at some of the uh, things around here it looks like jericho has saved the world in more than one occasion well yeah. the jericho the organization guys, has yeah. outposts all over all over the the imagica and yeah. they're there to monitor the area they're in and report it back to the jericho organization so in that respect you could say that we're spies yeah, and but I think that it has to yeah. do with the intent because the intent yes. for us is to make sure that that every all the all of the Imagica and all of the Dominions continue to get along and generally try to keep the peace between everyone. My question, or more like the thing I'm concerned about, is that when when you're using the term spy, um, Cassius is actually his intent is for the Aboriginal children which is completely the opposite of the point of Jericho squad. So if anything, he's the one who's being disruptive and trying to cause problems. So I think it's just specifically about the use of the word itself that is an issue that I guess is bothering Chodavir. So the question is, can we not throw the word back at him because words are so big and can mean so many things? I agree. I yeah, mean, the, we're we're definitely not the bad guys. So we should yeah. really get on with our mission to kidnap someone and sec give them to the demon in the Gulf as a replacement for yourself. Yeah, Jonathan. <laughs> it makes me, that makes me uncomfortable. I have You're to making say it sound Jonathan. worse than it is. <laughs> okay. I Look, yeah, Bentley, I guess. Meanwhile, we should wanna, keep tabs you... on everyone else. The no, drama is, 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 is he joking? His what, what is career that? Career through clandestine acts. Right. Yeah, it sounds bad, but really, but we're actually, bad. by getting rid of Cassius and by giving Cassius to the Gulfs, we're actually still upholding the values of the Jericho squad because he's trying <laughs> to destroy it from the inside. Yes, he's a threat. He wants it to was self-defense. I had to send him to 
the golf. Exactly. He made, a, he made a deal with the golfs first. You know, I'm just, you know. And also the reason why, the reason why uh, Bentley is because he blinded one of the members of the golfs, golfs, excuse me, and lied to them. That seems excessive. So I think what we've established is that we're not going to win any sort of argument on the merits here. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, not when you put so it we, we should consider like what what he might actually say or not say or not be able to say at the debate. Yeah, I think um, we need to we need to at least talk to uh, we need to at least talk to uh, Cassius. We'll see how the debate goes. We'll see what sort of forces he intends to unleash at the debate. Well, and then uh, mm -hmm. what I can say is that all of you, all of you uh, VIPs at the debate will have one statement or question that you can make. And that's way more valuable than a vote. You'll have a vote too, but, but what the questions you ask or the statements that you make sway the whole population. We have uh cameramen and uh at the at the event and everyone across the imagica i guess save the fifth dominion because most of them don't know what's going on um will be able to make their vote i think that we should focus on the uh like i said the values of the jericho squad focus on that because that is an overarching platform that everyone should be able to agree on and also be prepared with as much knowledge as we can about the Aboriginal children, because that is something that's so ancient, nobody remembers it anymore. And it's kind of just fallen away into myth. Yeah, and, and uh, Musette, from, from your point of view, the, the relationship with Jericho Squad is a little complicated too, because they've they've occupied your home, right? Your, your, um, your, the fugue, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they've never, uh, they've never made, been threatening about it. Um, so it's a, it's, it's a little uneasy, but it's not, uh, but over the years, it's been like 30 years like that and, and, uh, or more, um, and you haven't had any problems with them. But yeah, they but are they occupiers, you know, but they, for whatever but they reason. Protected, but they protected, you know, the fugue and they protected her sister or her, you know, I mean. My cousin. Your cousin, right, right. Aldrin. Mm -hmm. So clearly Jericho Squad is a force for good. But anyway, I, okay. Drovo, where is the debate going to be? Oh, uh, yes. I wrote this down and I already forgot. Why you wrote it down? Yeah, I wrote down too much stuff. Stand by. <laughs> Standing by. Yeah. But I, I bet Trova, you have a lot of work to do before the debate. So uh, we'll, we'll, we will figure something out and let you know. God, I wrote this down. I spent a lot of time going through the uh, the Imagica, um, the um, index or not the index. What do you call that? The the the, the glossary thing at the end. Mm -hmm. Well, you did anyway. There, there, it, so. There's an audience chamber in in the uh, the castle of the of the um, autark. Okay. That used to that used to be a performing arts center kind of a place, mm -hmm. and it has a name, and I cannot <laughs> remember what it is, and I'm having trouble finding it. I know I wrote it down. Is it the pivot? No. Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, and and these days it's um, it is used for that somewhat, but it's also used for political stuff. Uh, it now it has a stream running through the middle of it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So it's in the castle of the Autark. Yeah. Okay. So that's on the top of Isordorex. Yeah. Yeah. Up the top of the hill. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, complicated. A lot of security. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Definitely a, a lot of a lot of places that we could 
um, exit if we need to. Uh, I remember the uh, the Palace of the Autark has a lot of terrace uh, balconies and stuff like that. It's called the Sescordium. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Real quick question, though. Should all of us go in or should some of us stay on the outside? That's we, a we good... don't have to figure that all now. I'm sure Dava has, some, has to you know, brush up on his talking points, and we can probably yeah. figure that kind of stuff out. And he uh, said that, Jonathan, you can't, you can't be uh, in, in this meeting. Uh, was that what you said, Drovo, that Jonathan cannot be there? Well, it, your giant spider I don't friend vote. I don't have and the talking bird might be a little hard to, for me to explain why they are VIPs. Okay. Well, they seem to hang out together pretty well, right? So I guess they can wait, wait outside. Or, uh, or maybe they can hang out in some rafters. They can be placed strategically. Watch from afar. It, it's an open air auditorium, oh. uh, so th there aren't rafters, but they could uh, they could go. There are general. There's a general audience up in the uh, in the upper area around the outside. It's like a coliseum in a way. Will they check us for weapons of any kind? Uh, yes. Yeah, they mm. will. But uh, your your Edomek silken sword, they would never take that away from you. Course, uh, it's yeah. a it's a symbol of your of our culture. Okay, so we may have to find a way to smuggle something in there just in case. They mm. they they do a cursory uh, check, but they're not thorough. Okay. Do they magically, um, like, I don't know, have a magical suppression field to like at the debate uh, do you know how to do that oh no um it, oh you're asking oh, me if there fine. is one yeah. yeah no no nothing like, like how, that. how common is like i guess how common is just guys in the street using magic is somebody going to worry about it or is that going to be kind of a surprise uh, no, no. Um, magicians are are held in high regard, and they're rare. Right. Um, in fact, having this many magicians in one room is is uh, is is like a miracle. Um, but that's what this organization is about. Yeah. So I mean, like Zoe, you're the one who relies more on daggers and automatic pistols and 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 and, and spears. Uh, you might, it might be hard for you to be able to sneak any of that stuff in, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have your ways to at least get a dagger in there. Um, That's fine. If, I got magic. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. You have the guiding bolt and the. Uh, well, and and also her her dagger is is a holy symbol. It just happens to also be pointy. Gotcha, gotcha. So you'll be able to <laughs> yeah. take that with you. Okay. Multitasking. Yes. <laughs> Yes, awesome. I mean, I'm for sure. I got my silken sword, and I have lots of spells because I've been like catching up on my spell book. So I do have a lot of powerful spells. And Musette also has some really powerful stuff. And Ralph, you got uh, you you know you got your own stuff. I think we'll be good. We'll we'll be good. Maybe maybe we can uh, sway them into not seeing that we carry like at least a couple of weapons in there. That would be interesting. Well, I, I am talking we, we like can, we can discuss this later. I'm yeah, sure. Okay. Not Let's have your brother, the political candidate. Right. <laughs> Drovo at this point says, "I this is making me a little nervous that you feel like you will you'll need weapons." Well, I'm, I'm anything's like, a like, weapon if you try hard enough. Well, if brother, I had eyebrows, <laughs> I would be raising my good. Well, brother, I mean, you remember these what waffles are you, great. Right? Um, well, I'm about done. Uh, what do you guys want to want to do today? Uh, yeah, I would say <laughs> I could really get outside. What, what you... Yeah, you can take Willem with you. Uh, <laughs> show them around. If you want to discuss with me any questions that you want to ask at the debate, I'd be happy to kind of uh, workshop those with you. Um, well, definitely. Than... Uh, how how would the Second Dominion people feel if they knew that Cassius? is in touch with the uh, Nolianak. That's a good question. Um, I think the, the um, 
the general reaction to Nellie and Axe is fear, right? Yeah. I mean, they're they make people nervous. You remember what they did to you, right? So I think yeah. that would be a great point to that's if, if things get ugly, we can always bring up that his connection to the Aboriginal children and and the fact that they have a Nullian Act, which we all thought were dead, means that there's something going on that he's involved with that people probably wouldn't like to hear. Troubling. Mm -hmm. uh, but but awesome. remember that the Nolian Acts used to be considered holy. Uh, they're, they're the army of the unbeheld. Yes, but we know that for a long time, uh, the autark was destroying a lot of stuff. He was like waging war on cities uh, for political and religious reasons. And people weren't down with that. I mean, you remember a lot of the atrocities that were committed. And uh, under the goddesses, it's been pretty good so far. I agree. I I don't think people want to return to that, but I mean, there's always people who think the old ways were better, I guess. That's what, don't... that's what troubles me the most. And but you I still have because it's not in recent memory. Yeah. Every time you get farther and farther away from something like that, people just forget, you know, it was 30 years ago now. Yeah. There's, there's whole children. There's a whole generation like, removed it doesn't take long for people to forget or anybody to forget <laughs> yeah well um so what other talking points are you thinking about well uh like i said um that uh Uretimek has always been on the council uh mm -hmm. they, and that's what that's the way it should be um That's a rather populist, uh, traditionalist way of like going about what, what do you intend to do uh, to offer the people uh, if you become the representative of the First Dominion? Uh, I would uh, honor and, and, keep the, uh, uh, and keep us in good stead with the, the goddesses, particularly Uma Uma Gamagi. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you're at... Um, I would point out that I believe that Cassius is, is, is has his platform is worrisome and that he's a demagogue, that he plans to be another autarch. Yeah, I mean, he is kind of a nativist and uh, an isolationist. I, I don't think he wants to maintain a unified Imagica. Do, does it strike you that uh, people are on board with that idea? I can't imagine why they would be, uh, but yeah. he's been he's been cagey about his platform, and and this is something that that Chertuvir would kind of know that it's not like the Fifth Dominion where there's commercials and stuff about platforms. Mm -hmm. This town hall debate is like a one stop thing where everybody gets out all of their stuff, everybody votes, and it all happens in one day. So nobody really knows what his platform is yet. Well, that's that's going to be the point that we uh, we can grill him on. I mean, make sure that people understand exactly what he's offering is not probably in their best interest. I agree. I can see you've never been through an election before. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've been very busy in the, Back in the uh, fifth. This is not how it works at all. Well, we're not in the fifth, so you're lost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Drovo, I think you should prepare yourself. Um, and we'll definitely be there to offer any support and bring up okay. these interesting points about Cassius. If any of you uh, want to run your questions or statements by me, I, I'd be happy to, to hear them. Yeah. Or if you want to take the night to think about them, we can maybe discuss them in the morning. Um, you could even, I don't know if it's prudent or if it's okay, but you could maybe even run them by Ridley when she gets here. Yeah, I'd like to know what Ridley has to say. Yeah. Just a different opinion. Me too. I, I don't know why she's even coming a day early or why she's visiting Jericho. That seems like she's... A, um, in danger of exposing her uh, her connection. 
to this company to this organization well i guess we'll we'll talk to her when she gets here yeah she should be here in the morning that's what she told me okay well uh i I mean, I can tell you the stuff that we've been doing, uh, but uh, you yeah, know, it's a long story. I, I'm sure he needs to prepare for the debates tomorrow. Yeah. But, well, yeah. Uh, yeah. you have said some things that have confused me. Uh, something about shoving Cassius into a pit. Well, uh, it's just an expression. It's just an expression. Yeah. We're not, you know. Is that a fifth? We've all been expression? hanging out. Yeah, yeah. In the pits, you know, you're in the pits. You just don't thing. It also refers to armpits, which Fifth Dominion are very nervous about because of something called the bubonic plague. Drogo, um, do not worry. Uh, it's all fine. It's we're here to protect you, and we're here to make sure that you know the Imagica stays uh, protected. And uh, no, go they, get some rest. Yeah, <laughs> prepare for the okay. debate tomorrow, and we will talk to you later. All right. Yeah. So Drovo, uh, Drovo uh, says good night to everyone, and and. Uh, and heads over to the guest room and and uh, closes the door behind him. Staying, it. staying. God damn it! So this is the night. I guess I thought it was more okay. So this is the first no, night we got back. It's late. It's actually pretty late at night. Yeah, yeah late breakfast the first or dinner. Night we got back. And it debates the day after tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. And, and so uh, uh, Riley's Bentley, coming tomorrow. Yeah, Riley's going to be there in the morning. Mm -hmm. okay awesome so i guess we can go to have a rest uh, well, yeah uh, what are you thinking john go watch uh show willard your movies <laughs> never been one. he's never been outside of golf before and i, I think you really soothe him especially Ron and the rest Holmes. of you why don't you uh just 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 come talk to me in my room for a little bit sure away from everybody else Sounds good. Cho Devere can't can't but but help in but the ball truth to everyone. And so now we're kind of in a tricky corner. Yeah, I can definitely tell you've never been through an election before. I I <laughs> would like we're just brother. gonna stand on the merits of the truth. <laughs> well <laughs> I I'm he was a, there I'm for all of the he was there for all of the elections that happened of all of the members of the, the Imagica Council. Yeah, I'm a scholar, remember? I'm a rhythmic scholar. All right, all right, scholar. Here, let's, let's come in the room. I got some stuff I want to write. <laughs> okay. didn't necessarily you seem to be an expert in, in, in subterfuge, in so I will definitely uh, hear what you have to say. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, Musette and Ralph came along, too. Just sneak in. I want to be included, too. <laughs> I guess the first thing to establish is our goal. Like, are we trying to kidnap Cassius? Is Zoe, is Zoe there or, or not? Because Zoe hasn't said debate? anything. Okay, Zoe's not part of this meeting. <sighs> oh, Zoe's okay. still eating her waffles. Okay. okay. I'm just that. Eat my waffles. Okay. With a plate of waffles in the room. <laughs> Wait, cool. I'm really so we're distracted all, now. That's We're all a that part was, of this meeting. Sorry. Waffles. We're listening. You did not put in a couple of notes. So, so Bentley was not invited to the meeting? No, no, no. I had him go take Willard and show him movies or ask him to. Did I think show he who, really who, I, Yeah. Show who, who is he showing the Willem. movies to? Willem. Oh, I see. Spider. Okay. He's trying to make sure you guys become friends. Okay. He says. And also uh, be distracted. Yeah. Is that really <laughs> something that he'd be interested in? Look at how many eyes he has. You know, he used to watch movies. He can watch like two at once. <laughs> We're not equipped for that. Oh, I'm, I'm getting you for Christmas. Do they do Christmas out here? Uh, no. It, it, it's a it's a sort of a of a tradition more than a holiday. Brought over but from the fifth. But I, I really think Willem would uh, get a kick out of the Tom Brown affair. I just watched that. Maybe we can watch something else. How about the Blair Witch Project? Oh, oh yeah. I scare him. <laughs> no, he'll love oh. it. 
He's, okay. he's from the Gulf. He's used to the horror. So. You should show him arachnophobia. <laughs> oh, I, no. I don't have that one. Oh. Do you have any light comedies? I think a romantic comedy would go for well. Mm. <laughs> Bentley, just take the damn spider and show him some movies. You have yeah, Draymond Wire. He, I'll, I'll let him pick, I guess. Wire, yes. he, 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 takes, <laughs> he, he, he takes Willem upstairs and uh, Willem really has to squeeze his body to fit up the spiral staircase, but he makes it through. Okay, Seagull, tell us what you're thinking. Okay, well, first a couple questions. Are we kidnapping him? Like, it sounds like you guys are debate prepping <laughs> and getting ready for, like, a, you know, the the election on its merits and starting a political movement and i thought we were kidnapping him and sac- giving him to demons like That's what well, I thought. maybe uh, to make sure we're on the same yeah, page but it's a pretty delicate subject because we're discussing this in front of drovo and drovo is his direct political opponent you know i mean we can't have him implicated in any sort of plots that would be very very detrimental to his career which is why we're in this room um this is true. <laughs> okay, look, I'll just say my stuff and then you guys can say what sure. you think. I think this would be a good time to try to discredit him at the debate and also a way of us to be able to have access to him, to talk to him and confront him about the things that he's done that were not right, like le- leaving the gate open, being involved with the Aboriginal yeah. children, you know, kidnapping my own brother. Uh, and now he's threatening us with lies and blackmail. We really need to confront him about this and, 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 you know, though, I mean, you really got to get your say in first. I mean, can't we just take him? Well, I would love to have a meeting with him at least. <laughs> I, I think having talk. a meeting with him is going to be like, talking to a wall he's okay. gonna do what he's gonna do and he's right. and, and and if you try to expose it to the public i don't think anyone's going to believe what we say whether we come out first or second yeah i, yeah. I believe cassius has much more experience blackmailing and navigating the politics we do whereas we have a certain set of skills and maybe we should lean into those set of skills instead of trying to politics two days Okay. Well, I think that's I see what you mean. Yeah, he's probably going to deny everything, and we don't really have any hard evidence except for of course he is. He's a politician. But also, we have no proof at all that he kidnapped your brother. Yeah, I mean, we have a hunch. We have a hunch, but we never got any form of proof. As of right now, the only proof we have about the fact that the uh, gate wasn't closed is Willem. So I guess technically Willem is our most important mm. uh, important um, piece right now that we have of evidence. Yeah, yeah. Asset. I, thank you. Yeah, Words. I agree with what you're saying. That, that that's an interesting angle. Uh, definitely, that's an interesting angle. And even though we he's don't not have allowed any... in the VIP section, right? He's well, not allowed. yeah. And what are we going to say? He he's a bad. Cash is just a bad guy. Look at this demon we have. It's all his fault. <laughs> <laughs> well just cool. like that okay here's my here's it's my, his demon i promise here's what <laughs> i'm thinking he's definitely going to have cultists there he's definitely going to have like support like tactical support at this debate i can't believe that he would go in there without bringing some sort of like you know strong arm in there just in case something happens he knows drovo suspects him of kidnapping him he knows that i i'm now a part of the jericho and he knows that we're you know doing this stuff so he will definitely have goons there if we can expose those goons and we can if we can show them that those goons are there to to strong arm the people maybe that's a way that we can unmask him and and prove that he has a relation with the aboriginal children and the nolian act which people will freak out over so what do you guys think I don't know. I think that's dangerously close to uh, politicking, which is what Jonathan mentioned is probably and the, not the best idea. And the fact I think that we should paralyze run circles around us. He's a career politician. And there, there, there's a chance to tie him up and drag him down to the Gulf. And I guess if we enter combat at the debate, that's not going to put us in a good light and innocence. Yeah, we're, yeah, I think combat at the debate and debating at the debate are 
debate are playing where it was. It's not we're like, going to lose public opinion either way because we're not good at this stuff. And Willem can't um, speak for himself. He's got no vocal cords. So, I mean, I Willem think... Raises a, uh, uh, raises a raises an arm. <laughs> but, uh, Willem's in the other room watching movies. Oh, that's right. Never mind. He doesn't do that. <laughs> He's watching TV. He gets a, he gets a weird feeling that uh, that somebody's talking about him. His hairs yeah. bristle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, um, I don't know any other way. If if you want to take the political route, I don't see, foresee us uh, finding any more any proof to get us through this. And Musette's right. He's a career politician. He's a professional liar. So, right. So we're gonna have to go take this a different route. Okay. So. Why don't we do a preemptive like investigation of our own? Kidnapping? And, and, well, what did you say? I think you said kidnapping. Why don't we do I, a preemptive? I heard kidnapping. <laughs> I, I, okay, so I, I back see to your my mind question. I had a question earlier asking if this kidnapping is going to go down, it has to go down directly before the debate on mm -hmm. while he's en route to the debate or mm -hmm. directly after the debate. So the question is when should it happen? The end. I want to hear what he has to say first. Well, we can hear his talking points while we're bringing him to the Gulfs. So I've got another idea. Uh, um, I can always just hide out unseen and make it sound like he's saying anything I want him to. And so okay. as he's speaking to the crowd, I can always just replace his answers. I mean, I mean, that's not going to work. I mean, when Why you would think that about not work because Cassius is also a uh, he's a sorcerer, uh, right? He's he's I mean, he's a paladin. He's a wizard. Uh, he'll definitely know if he's being uh, if there's magic being used and he would probably be stronger than you and he would counter that illusion. All we need is a couple him to say a couple things foolish on stage before he notices. Hmm. So embarrass him, embarrass him that, off the platform. Or basically. somehow expose him. And, you know, all he needs is a little clip of the evening news of losing the shit. Stage. Okay. And we've got try. him. Okay. So you're saying you want to go to the meeting and try to embarrass him there. Not, and then not cause insist chaos. on kidnapping anymore, right? No. And then we'll kidnap him directly after, like he's that's it. Okay. Cause once he, once he's leaving this escorium. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that gives us a chance to know what his tactical, you know, strategy is in terms of of having any sort of security there okay I, i'm in on that one and we definitely need to talk to to riley as well tomorrow so it could he could yeah. just use it as proof that the jericho squads are yeah, interfering in for fair and free elections by interfering with the debate you just I suggested mean, interfering with right. the debate yeah well i yeah, I did. I, mm -hmm. I'm just, just throwing ideas out here. We're brainstorming. Okay. I'm trying okay. to come up with a plan. I just I just didn't want to do it in front of my brother. Zoe, you're an expert well, in like deniability. stealth. What what do you think in terms of the operation? What do you need to know um in terms of the, the location to know how we could properly assess the the chances of uh of of maybe possibly kidnapping him? Well, you've said several times now that the spider can't sit with us in the VIP section, mm -hmm. but can he crawl up the outside? Yeah, it's an open air. He can sit in the, he can sit in the general audience, but well, also do we know he'll take direction from us? Well, he went upstairs and watched Splash. <laughs> well, he definitely uh, <laughs> is an ally now. I mean, he's been... He's been helping us. Uh, Don't put too through. much faith in him. He's an ally until the job's done. I know. I know. He's here to make if, sure that we. If his goal is to go back to the Gulf, he'll help us. If his goal is not to go back to the Gulf, it's because he likes it here and will help us. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I think we're on the same page with Willem. Yeah, I think so. He's this the least of my worries right now. Yeah, this Discordium is an open air location. So there'll probably be places where you can just, you know, let, let's not forget, he's a spider. He can walk up walls. So uh, definitely. I can check it out from the air tomorrow so we can make a better game plan too. 
Okay. Yeah, we yeah. definitely need to identify every exit entrance. <laughs> um, it'll be kind of difficult because I'm sure that there's secret entrances as well. Um, is it open to the public right now or is it pretty closed? Do we know anyone? So, and I can also do things like um, you know, create magical darkness that I did that, that I and one can see in and just create the darkness, run in and grab them and then leave, fly away. You're, you're breaking <laughs> up a little, Jonathan Livingston. You said summon some darkness and try to take him? Yeah, just because the I and Willem can see through the darkness, I think. Hmm. Willem can. So you just make it so nobody can see anything and snatch and grab. And Wait, Willem and I have invisibility too that I can give to anyone. Interesting. But I think a lot of these decisions need to look at the layout first. Yes. I just wanted to kind of throw some ideas around that weren't weren't meeting Cassius on his turf. And if we kidnap him, if we take him, I, I mean, let's not use the word kidnapping. If we eventually confront him and we have to, to fight, you know, with his security, um, we definitely need to be discreet about that. We, we can't do that in front of everybody. Otherwise, he will just prove, it will just help people believe that we're, you know, spies and we're just trying to interfere. Well, if he so, says we're spies, why don't we just be spies and be friendly oh. with him and con him into going with us? No, does he know be, our faces? If we be spies, why don't I and Willem be spies and you guys can be public heroes? Okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah I bet you do like that sort of <laughs> Yeah. You know, so maybe what? we could provide a little spectacle that would not reflect poorly on the Jericho squad considering what we are. Yeah. Well, I don't want anyone to be put in danger that isn't an immediate part of this plan. If there's people that are just there attending the debate, you know, I don't want them to get hurt. Well, then tell them not to hurt each other. I'm not going to hurt anyone. Well, so, the, so here's anyone. the thing. So we need to report what we know to Riley tomorrow morning. That's step number one, because we have to let her know what Cassius has been doing and our suspicions about him. And you have to do some aerial reconnaissance of the uh, castle of the Otark. So let's do that and, 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 and make another decision about the strategy tomorrow morning. What do you guys think? Yep. You, know that the, you, you would know that the castle of the Autark is has been sort of converted into a sort of a municipal government building. Mm -hmm. um so it, it does it does have like normal hours of operation and it's closed you know it would be closed like right now but probably open in the morning okay well right now i think we're all tired right i mean yep i could take a look you know i am an urchin so twice as fast i can have can major dark vision you can probably and I can fly, up. so I can just go check it out when nobody's there right now, yeah. quickly before we go to bed. Okay, if you pass by, fly over the gate Outside to the of Saints, operations hours. I'm sure there'll be a lot of pieces of meat out there that they give to the poor, so you can probably peck a meal out of that. That yeah, Snacks are always a bonus. Yep. Okay, well, I okay. guess we'll, wait. we'll pick it up tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you find. Bye! You can uh, click the long rest button on your characters if you want to. Okay. Uh, awesome. Get to double click. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and yeah, and I'll just spend an hour or two flying over to the amphitheater and seeing what I can see from the exterior and getting like a basic layout. Okay. Um, but I'm not going to spend all night there. Okay, so and it's easy enough to find because you remember from the conversation that this castle is up at the top of the hill. Uh, so you fly up the hill and you see the only giant castle that's anywhere, anywhere, uh, anywhere near there. Uh, inside of the courtyard, uh, you see what looks like a like a Roman style Colosseum, but it's got um, or medieval maybe, and it's got um, it's got wooden. Um, raised platform for an audience around the outside and it's got a large central area in the middle with a stream running through the middle of it 
Oh, so they it's, live it's odd to see a it. stream running at the top of a hill. It, it seems like it's not natural. So they're live. It's a live stream. They live stream all these debates. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That's fine. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the stream like goes under the speaking dais. Yeah, and there the there center. is there's a table. Uh, so on one end of the stream, you see a table. Uh, with five chairs in it and in front of that table there are two podiums pr presumably for the debaters right for the the candidates uh, and across the stream there is a row of benches and that must be you know for the vip section so the vips get to sit down in the in the central area and then there's okay. the general audience sits in the uh, the outside we we would bring it up, except that it's got you know we're we're kind of set up for yeah. all of the people and stuff. So, I got a pretty good idea. <laughs> I drew it. Okay. Um, and uh, so while you're making your way back, um, uh, Cherdovir, what is your passive perception? So if you see on the left middle, there's the mm -hmm. senses, and one of them is passive perception. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Passive perception. Um, passive perception, passive WIS perception is 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, where did I put? Okay. Um, so in the... Uh, in the night while you're sleeping, you feel a sharp pain uh, in your leg. Okay. Uh, your eyes are open, but you can't move. And you see Willem kind of hovered over the top of you. Uh, he starts spinning, uh, spinning your body around and cocooning you in silk. Oh, wow. Am I paralyzed? Yeah. Can I talk? You can, it's really hard. You can kind of move your mouth. Well, you that can move answers your that eyes. question. Oh, damn. Okay. Well, oh, uh, I, 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 through my pain, I try to say, Willem, what are you doing? And, uh, and he, he, he looks at you. And as he looks at you, you feel like you're transported. And, um, and now you're in a, a sort of a craggy, uh, black and red, um, craggy, mountainous sort of area. The sky is made out of rock, uh, and you feel this 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 sense of that you're you're so glad that you finally got your compound eyes back. You feel like uh, there's going to be some delicious pain as they open up the wound where your arm used to be and attach a clockwork mechanical new arm, uh, but you're looking forward to it. Wow. And as, um, as you're feeling all these things, Gaustus says, ah, oh, you're here. Okay, and and I, now you feel your consciousness separate from his and you realize that those feelings were his feelings. You don't have compound eyes and you're not missing your arm. But, right. but uh, you're, now you're speaking with, with Gaustus. He okay. says, I'm, I'm sorry, this is probably alarming, but uh, I didn't feel that the power that you had alone would be enough. So I'm lending you some of mine. Okay. I understand. So I, I, I know the promise that I made and uh, I'm still, you know, you have the Herethmex word. So I know Gaustus that y you want, you know, you want Willem to come back to your wife. So I'm doing the best I can. Yes. Um, I, I'm also, I'll also be providing you, in addition with your new power, I'll be providing you with a spell. Uh, it's, it, it'll be on, it'll be in the form of a, of a, a parchment or a scroll. You read it. It will open a gate directly to the gulfs, to this location where we're standing right now. Hmm. Okay, that's useful. Yes. Um, It'll be open for only one minute. Okay. So I, 
yeah so i guess i do need to uh that that's very strategic that's very tactical i i appreciate that that will help us fulfill our mission um we'll 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 not fail i, I don't want to come so. back here <laughs> i don't want well to then back. uh good luck to you and uh you feel your your consciousness kind of shunted back into your own body and uh you're yeah, you drift into unconsciousness. Okay. All I'm, right. Um, I'm definitely horrified about the experience. And I, <laughs> yeah. I know a little bit more now what it feels like to be dragged to the gulfs. So I'm starting to come around to Jonathan Seagull's point of view about Cassius. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and uh, Jonathan, you, you fly back. Um, is everyone else asleep at this point? Yep. I'm sleeping. Okay. All right. I slumber. All right. And uh, Zoe? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, how, how far is uh, Jonathan's dark vision? I'm 20. Oh, okay. Because mine's, mine's 60. I didn't know what everybody else's was. Mm. I didn't know whether I should be there or not. Oh. I don't sleep at night. <laughs> well, it's kind of late. He came back. Okay. Yeah, it's did a uh, flyover. So I'm yeah, unconscious. And, yeah, and uh, it sounds like is everybody unconscious then at this point? Not Zoe, right? Yeah, she just said she doesn't sleep. I don't sleep very well. I'm old. <sighs> okay. Well, and do do I add a scroll to my inventory? Uh, yeah, it's a, a scroll of gate. Okay. Scroll of gate. Gotcha. Yeah, I think it's just going to say spell scroll and the level on there when you try to add it. Okay. Um, but you can put a, no a note in there that it's the spell gate. And I can't remember what level spell that is. Probably scroll. like, it's probably spell like a scroll. sixth level or something. Sixth level? Okay. I, I can't, yeah. That would be an equipment? Yeah. Or other okay. Scroll. Uh, I'm not finding a way to add and, that to and, my. And everybody can take a long rest. And I mean, if Where you're in, if you're really staying up all night, you would not get a long rest, and you'd take a point of exhaustion. Is that what Zoe wants to do? I'm just saying, I sleep like crap. So. Oh, okay. I mean, well, but you, but you're okay. That's that's fine then. Gotcha. All right. Um, so in the morning, and it's been a longer night for some than others, uh, <clears throat> you wake up and uh, Bentley has got some leftover waffles and he's also making some new ones. And you see that uh, that um, there's a, a, a woman there as well. And Drovo is up. Everybody is up except for Cherduvir, who is still uh, has not come out of his room. And, and Bentley says, good morning, everyone. I want to introduce you to Riley Masters. <coughs> uh, Riley, Hi, Riley. Uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, I, hello. <sighs> I just look I wish that I, I were here point. under better circumstances. Uh, w can you introduce yourselves? I just look at her suspiciously while I eat off the plate. Good morning, but, Riley. Oh. Good morning. What's your name? I am Ralph. Ralph, Ralph. is my name. Have Ralph, some waffles. Okay. I, it's good to put uh, faces to the names. And and you are? And he looks uh, at Musette. 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 Musette Aya, right? Okay. Yes. Um, and uh, that bird's a Jonathan Livingston. Uh, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. That uh, makes sense. At this okay. point, I swallow my waffle and hop on to Chodavir's plate and start on his. And is um, has Zoe come out yet? Yeah. <laughs> 
You must be Zoe Mason. That's the truth. So, okay. So, so, um, we're missing a friend. Chirdovir is not awake yet. Doesn't yeah, appear so. Yeah, that's kind of unusual, though. He's a pretty punctual person. So, should someone go check on him, Ralph? Well, okay. let, let's hold let's hold off on that because uh, the, I want to talk to the rest of you without him first. Oh, okay. Um, so that makes me slightly uncomfortable, but okay. I, I I'm the the reason that I've come here early is because I got I received a report uh, from. A person who was with you, uh, Tressa Young, that you as a group made a deal with a creature from the Gulfs. Is Not that correct? As a group. Uh, it Not wasn't a group. right. I, I, it wasn't I understand. as a group. It was one I, specific person, but also the reason why is because around uh, the sixth level, we ran into quite a bit of uh, issues and um, we were offered help from, from the depths. So the, the specific complaint that she made, uh, and I understand I wasn't there and that things were difficult, but the specific complaint that Tressa made uh, was that Cherdovir said, in 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 the in the spirit of offering up souls to this demon that Cherdovir said, what about our fallen Jericho members? Oh, tell her to get over herself. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's uh, a serious I, I, I accusation. Understand. I do understand how that is uh, very very hurtful. Um, I've been with Chudavir since since his brother was kidnapped, however many moons ago now at this point, and he's been under a lot of pressure. I know that doesn't excuse the behavior. Um, I don't remember any behavior at all. I don't know what she's talking about. So did he or did he not offer up the souls of fallen Jericho members to the gulfs? In hindsight, it's I do not like him remember. I do not remember him doing that specifically. Make a deception check. <laughs> uh, Twenty six. Wow. Yeah. This <laughs> okay. I can do. Lord. Oh my gosh. Okay. She says, really? So do you think that Tressa was lying then? No, there was a lot of demons, devils, people spouting off, brainstorming ideas. It was a very confusing time, um, but we would never do anything like that. And we have since, I mean, look, Chodovir offered himself up as collateral. I mean, he's obviously not of the mind to That's betray. Not the, no, well, what, the way she tells it is that Ralph offered himself as collateral. And that Cherdovir stepped in and offered up first Jer fallen Jericho squad members and then his brother's political rival. I don't remember him saying anything about fallen Jericho members. So, but you're saying that he did, but you do agree that he offered up his brother's political rival as a, in exchange. I have not agreed to that. I mean, a lot was going on and you just kind of had <laughs> to be there. I mean, it's you, it's kind of like a he said, she said thing, right? I now. mean, when you put it and, like and, that, and, maybe we are the not bad only guys. <laughs> is is uh, Cassius Breyer, his brother's political rival, but he's also a former Jericho member. He's also a piece of you know. Um. <laughs> well, the, the, she did say in her report that yeah. there are um, there are some disturbing um, accusations to be made, also about about um, Cassius. But isn't he entitled to a fair trial? Well, of course, Shouldn't everyone is. But at the same time, Tressa mm -hmm. was there in the desert alone for so long. 
She never got any chance to rest. And then she drops like last minute that she has a husband, I believe, which she wrong felt person. wrong person. I'm different places. See, look, even Ralph is confused. Yeah. Well, I suppose being in that place would do that to you. Yeah, it was it was pretty terrifying being there. Um, and it was it was a very long, arduous journey. And I think it might have, I mean, and we haven't even had time really to sit down and process everything that happened. So to come home immediately and write a report, I'm not really sure if that's the best idea. I mean, I uh, think- Well, that I, that's why I'm here. I'll write the report. I just need to get your statements. So I thought that if I thought that if if I talked to you all together, uh, that I could get a cohesive report and this would be more informal. But I could also bring you in individually. Sure, whichever you want. I mean, it was a very confusing time. Um, I I I cannot really confirm that uh, Chodavir offered up fallen Jericho members. It was very. I mean, there was mental fatigue there was things that i'm sure i saw and heard things that were not real and not there but as you said, said parsing those out is kind of at this moment is kind of her, kind her of difficult. words were that he said what about the fallen jericho squad members what about them and tressa said no no you can't let's let's just say let's just say yeah. shodavir yeah it sounded did. like he was mourning them I mean, sacrifice you know for the greater good. What would you do to Chodavir? Yeah, were they not the ones that got to be saved instead of us? You know, why not the fallen members of the Jericho squad? Why did they that's have finishing to their there? mission? Okay, make another deception check with disadvantage. <laughs> Ooh. Um, 12. I wish I could use the other one. I rolled I, I'm getting the feeling that you're a deceptive kind of slippery one. Maybe no, I'm I haven't not going been to in get the ocean anything in quite a while. Maybe I'm not going to get anything useful out of you, Seagull. When was the last time anybody did? You ran I don't out of know. That's why then. I'm here. Okay. Zoe, uh, Tressa spoke highly of you. Uh, she said that when there was an offer uh, to bring any souls to hell, that you were not a part of it. No. And unfortunately, I do have to agree with Teresa's report. In fact, um, <clears throat> there's a letter here in my coat pocket, which apparently she slipped in prior to our return. So I actually was expecting... Uh, something like this to happen and to see exactly what everybody had to say. And I have to say that I am a little bit amazed and confused at y'all because we were all there when this happened. Mm. And I'm not all there anywhere. That's true, but that's beside the point. Why don't you want to talk to Shodavir? I wanted I mean, to get your I wanted to hear your stories first before we to, brought him out. Right. Well, I mean, so much was happening. I do want to talk to Chertovir. I He's the one I want to talk to the most. Well, you can have my statement. <clears throat> I'm going to go. <laughs> For what it's worth. OK. And um, thank you, Zoe. So, Zoe, in, in your words, you you're saying that it happened the way that Tressa described it. <clears throat> well, I, I think we're simplifying exactly what happened uh, quite a bit, but um, technically, yeah, everything there is true. Now, the spirit might not be the way that you're interpreting it, but on technicalities, yes, she is correct. And both she and I were snubbed by the most evil, foul things as uh, not being wanted. So it worries me quite a bit that... Um, Chodavir was 
chosen as someone to, well, for all intents and purposes, strike a deal with the devil. I'm sorry, but I feel like our uh, religious and or non-religious views are coming into play here and our opposing views. Because what happened is, is she um, did not get identified as a heretic, which all of us were just trying to make it through to the end for Tressa, for her team, because they got slaughtered at, I wanna say the fourth level. So just a general reminder, Tressa had already been in that hellscape, fake hellscape, several times. Just writing stuff down as you're, as you're saying this. So, so we figured the I, best way to get through and get to the end because we wanted to complete our mission was to play along as much as we could. Y'all keep saying I, we. I think I understand. I was just eating french fries. <laughs> I mean, I don't even really know why I'm part of this investigation. I, I, I gave my statement. I need waffles. <laughs> he's, and Bentley says, ah, they're coming up. He, he, he's already put a bunch of them out, actually. There, he's, he, there's leftover waffles from last night, and then he's making more to put in the pile. All right, I'll he says, definitely now, reach for the. Sorry. Now, Zoe, you said, you said that there. It sounded like there was some nuance that was missed in Tressa's report, and I'm from what I'm gathering from what Musette said. Talking paladins. You were put in a. You were put in a position that was difficult, and you were finding your group was finding the the best way through. Is that is that correct? Well, most of us, uh, basically, she and I had to tag along behind because we weren't wanted and we were not protected. So there was a good chance that um, we would have been killed or, God forbid, worse. Um, but, I was uh, kidnapped and nobody even looked for me. What do you mean you were shunned? <laughs> You went on your own. I, I think this is I think this is what happens when you let paladins write reports. There's a lot of nuance missed. Now, I'm not saying anybody is evil. I am just saying that um, you know we might want to just be careful because if someone who is clearly from a type of hell uh, thinks that someone is easily manipulated then maybe we need to work on those strengths so that they can protect themselves and the rest of our team. But you're only looking through it through your religious lens and I have a problem with that. No, we all agreed that the people we were fighting were working for hell as in bad things. So what I'm it's saying- It's still a fake hell. I'm sorry? It's a fake hell. I mean, eating I, all I of their waffles. But the, but the things that we were fighting were completely real. They were from the real hell. <laughs> was that like a piano chord? What was that? So like a motorcycle. Yeah. Just drag racing outside. Dramatic. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jonathan um, stole a motorcycle. She says, "No, I don't this have accusation. I can't drive a motorcycle." This accusation is troubling, and I'm here to speak to the character. <laughs> Uh, to r report back on the character of, of Cherdovir and decide if he should continue to be a member. Now, if he had actually given a soul of a fallen Jericho squad member to them, it would be a completely different situation. Well, he did. And he didn't. Well, so, then let's uh, grab it. We could, except that I understand that there, there is now a pact to deliver an ex Jericho squad member and his brother's political rival, which seems awfully convenient. Well, I mean, you float around ideas. I mean, it's nothing. <laughs> uh, I don't think that that's floating around ideas, right? I mean, isn't that a isn't that a, a signed uh, contract? No, <laughs> I didn't sign a contract. I don't know. What you can... I can't even use a pen and paper. We're, remember, Jonathan, we're talking about Sherdovir. 
Uh, not you. <laughs> knock on my door. Well, <laughs> I mean, none door. of us were involved in that uh, in that specific contract, so that would be something you'd have to discuss. With knock Twitter. on your door. All you're going to do is well, tell her the truth and make it worse for yourself. You're just going to blab everything out. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it sounds to me like you're wanting Chernovir to explain that for himself. Is that right? You don't. I just Are wanted you, to give you an opportunity to speak on his behalf before I talk to him. It sounds like you don't want to listen to what anybody has to say when we speak on his behalf, in my point of view. No, I'm trying to sort this out because I'm hearing uh, conflicting stories. So what, you know, what, what's, what would the ramifications be well, if I, he I, did, I, in fact? I don't know. There's a bunch uh, of us. Did, in fact, make you pack. I mean, what are we talking about? Suspension, duck and pay. She said the they'd kick him out. The ramifications if he did trade? The souls of fallen Jericho members? Theoretically. Like, or former Jericho squad members. Oh, it's because you're too close. No. You, you're talking about, are you talking about uh, Cassius Breyer? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just speaking purely hypothetically. Like, mm -hmm. like what? How much trouble is Chodavir in? Supposedly. Well, right, right now, he's in a contract. Theoretically. What I understand. Is that correct? Um, so I he hasn't, he lawyer, hasn't done his... confirm any contracts you may be a part of. If you don't want... Why are you asking me questions if you don't want to talk honestly? I just told you. I, I can't really speak to any contracts he's in. I'm not his lawyer. This is curiosity, man. We want to, Miss Riley, we just want to know where you're coming from. Is that wrong? But you're, 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 you're not, the, Zoe has, has spoken honestly to me. Musette has spoken honestly to me. And, and I'm, Ralph, you're kind of making snarky remarks. And Jonathan is outright lying to me. I don't think Jonathan's outright, outright lying. lying. I've been very careful. That, that's just Jonathan, dude. Like, you know, we've been stuck with him for a minute now. He's just like that. The sidestep. He's really good at that. I guess because he's a bird. <laughs> um, I can verbally dodge his reaction as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, I just... You know, I gave my statement. My statement was it was a very confusing time, but you keep pressuring us to try to say something. And I feel like you just want us to throw him under the bus here instead of going and figuring it out for yourself. I, no, no, no. It was I confusing. Want the truth. It does feel pretty biased. I, I have to agree is, with Jonathan on that end. An insane time. We were dealing with the denizens of a fake and a real hell at the same time. I was drunk on French fries. I mean, it was, I don't. I don't think anybody's statement can be actually, you know, I don't think our statements are, could be possibly accurate at this point. Well, and yet I mean, you when you're come in here with a up. preconceived notion of what we should be saying. And when we say we were confused, it's hard to remember because there were demons involved. You accuse me of lying. Exactly. Yeah. You're already showing up with having Tressa's report and using that as fact, showing up here and questioning us. So, no, I mean, that's that bias. No, that's not a judgment. That's, that's literally what investigation is. You have a piece, uh, uh, something that's submitted and you investigate it. Nobody's made a judgment yet. They're asking- That's not a judgment. I said, is it bias? Is she coming in biased? I'm coming in with the evidence I have, which is Tressa's report. And I'm trying to make reports from your statements to add to it. And believe me, the Jericho organization is full of weird stuff. Having members who have made pacts with spirits uh, is not unusual. Um, all of this stuff, you know, he, he, he could intend to renege on his contract. I have no idea. Uh, so I'm trying to get the facts from this. I know that Tressa was offended. Tressa was very upset. So if he had a contract and then reneged and his soul got taken, 
would he also be guilty of providing a soul of a Jericho member to demonic forces? Or is that double jeopardy? I think that he would be suffering enough at that point. I don't see any reason for us to get involved with that. Well, no, officially... we, we don't pro we don't prosecute uh, people that who, who are in hell. My official statement is I don't really know what happened with Chodavir. That's between Chodavir and his forces. Yeah. Uh, I suggest you ask him yourself. I don't I don't really feel comfortable giving a statement on his behalf. I mean, I right. think he well, did everything I mean, he could in a difficult time. Uh, maybe you, you don't have to advocate to anything one side or the other. I just want your experience and what you saw. It was kind of like talking to me. It was very confusing. Okay, fair enough. Or can I, I can I make use like a minor illusion to like make a little map on on the table and then have them fight like like toys and have flashing colors and like it was like just like this and then but really <laughs> exaggerated and make it kind of so, silly. So, so so she's seeing like who is fighting? In the like illusion? in the basement level with the two where um, there were the two Majera. demons and Willer, yeah, and Willem. Yeah. And just kind of have it be this. Magera. Yeah. And not try to make it a historical representation or show what was going on upstairs. Just kind of a, I don't know, highlights real, but also really exaggerated. Okay. But that's my statement. Yeah, and that that would be a, a difficult situation for anyone, and and I don't, I don't fault any of you for doing what you needed to do to get through, unless it's a betrayal of some kind, and that's what I'm looking for. That's I don't. Let me take that back. I'm not looking for it. That's what I'm investigating. I I, re I sincerely hope that it's not that the the intent is not exactly as uh, as Tressa suspected. Honestly, it makes my job harder and um, Jeric finding Jericho squad members isn't easy. And from what I've heard, Chertovir is a very capable member. <clears throat> and I thank you for that. I think that's fair. Um, and I apologize for um, speaking so uh, with so much fervor, I guess we'll say. Um, but when this conversation first started, it felt like, from my perspective, to me, that you had already decided that you needed us to tell you the story to only corroborate Tessa's sto Tressa's story, if that makes sense. I see what you mean. I understand now better that you're but, trying to get a better picture of what happened. Uh, Their human feelings are so annoying. There's one more thing. <laughs> um, when I told Bentley about uh, Tressa's accusation, he didn't know anything about it. I mean, he knew that there was that you had to provide a soul, but he didn't know that you were offering up Cassius Breyer or that Chertovir had offered Cassius Breyer. Uh, and from Jericho's point of view, all Cassius is right now is a, a, a member of a political uh, or, a, or a political candidate in here in the second dominion of, of Imagica representing the first dominion, dominion right? So uh, this is troubling. Uh, why was the first thing, why was the first person he thought of, or I guess maybe not the first person, but uh, what, the final person that he considered, why, why his brother's political rival? I can't speak on that because I'm not in, I'm not Trotevere. I, I don't want to make assumptions for anyone who isn't me. Well, there are some vague accusations about about Cassius Breyer and I acknowledge that and there have been some inquiries about him but we don't have any kind of solid evidence that that there's any wrongdoing on his part yeah we we've heard things but back to since I don't 
since I'm not going to speak on something I don't know about, I don't know anything about Cassius, and I know that there's no proof of anything. So it's just up in the air for me personally. Does this, does this squad have any experience with him? We've not met him yet, or I haven't. Okay. Um, any of you? Have you any of you had any dealings with him or any any experience at all that would uh, that would merit him being damned to hell? No. I don't know. Okay. Sounds like a no. All right. Well, um, I guess if I don't know why isn't. I don't know we're, we're breakfast is almost over if you want to if someone wants to go wake up, up Chertovir. <clears throat> uh I'll go get him. Okay. So uh, do you knock on the door or just open it? I knock on the door. Okay. Uh there's, there's, wake no, up. there's no yeah. answer. Chertovir. And and Chertovir, you're still you that you're not hearing any of that. You're still unconscious. Yeah, I'm knocked out. I'm not going in his room. I think he's <laughs> naked. <laughs> uh, Which is very weird. He's normally the first one up. Are you That's sure what that I said. he's, he's very punctual? Are you sure that he's there? Well, he's got nowhere else to go. Could, okay, could he, go this is, isn't this place is his home? Could he have made a run for it? Oh, step aside. Ain't nothing I ain't seen before. I open the door. Okay, so when you open the door, you see uh, Willem like right there in between the door and the bed. Oh. What in the hell? What? What is going on here? Hey, Willem, he kind you're of, missing waffles. He kind of uh, backs up a little bit and makes his body bigger to to get between you and and Chertovir. Listen, buggy man, that boy needs to wake up. Willem just kind of shakes his head. I'll just slip under his between his legs. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so so you what you see is is uh, Chertovir is wrapped up in a in a silky cocoon on the bed. I'll turn to Willem. No, bad. No, and then say it slower and kind of like bop his nose with my beak and go. He, to start he takes pulling. his his leg and and pushes you back out the door. Okay, well, Riley, the, there's Shodavir. Go ask him your question. Yeah, yeah. Now Riley says, "What? Ask. What's what's questions? happening in here?" No, just go in there. See, now you know what we're talking about. This is exactly what it was like when things were happening. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. Why are you asking me? Yeah. Things get very confusing when Well, when the because Gulf I wasn't involved. there, and so I'm doing my best. So what is... I don't know what is going on. You, you brought you a demon back. You brought a demon back with you, it looks like. He's mostly harmless. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I no, feel no, like John is dead. Go get Billy. He's been, he's been pretty chill with us this whole time, you know. And the only reason that this 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 giant spider's here is because you know, it's it's uh, making sure I didn't go into to that vortex. I didn't I'm gonna to look at, look at Willem and be like, Willem, no, back off. Let us into I, the room. I understand that this was a complicated situation that you were all in. And I appreciate that he saved you, Ralph. I do. Oh, this is this is strange. Okay. Um, well, so... back off. Willem. Hmm? Oh, I'm just yelling at Willem. Like, oh, right yeah. Willem face. is is still Go lay down. Is still Go sit down. He's still protecting the cocoon. Well, there's he's your. Not, he's not. He's not going to back off. He's, I'm going to mage hand and start picking at the cocoon miserable. while I'm talking to him. You think um, I can cut him out? You, you, if you, yeah, he, um, oh shoot, now I got to pull up Willem. <laughs> He's going to attack you. Me? What? No, uh, Chernobyl. I mean, I'm sorry, not Chernobyl. He's going to attack Jonathan. Oh no, I thought they were buddies. We shouldn't have poked him in the eyeball. 
I think he's angry about the movie. Bad. Yeah, Thomas Crown Affair does that to me too. I thought he watched Splash. No, they oh, didn't. They, they actually wa- watched <laughs> Reptilian. Oh. Huh. Okay. So. It's like the same movie combined. Both movies combined. Yeah, it, it's the ripoff of Godzilla 1998 from Asylum. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that movie. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So Willem is protecting the cocoon, so he's going to. Uh... So well, actually, he's just going to swing at you with his leg and try to knock you out of the room. So that's a nine to hit. So I guess he missed. Yeah, I'll just flutter there, and but I'll, I'll like back off. But Willem, what are you doing? I thought we were friends. I'm going to cast my can my friendship can trip on Will. Um, okay uh, just so i can get past him and so what's the what's the saving throw on that oh uh, the saving throw uh where does it say and, and in the meantime willem has kind of backed himself up so that his body is over the top of chertubir i don't know doesn't say oh uh doesn't have a saving throw it Just should a, be like wisdom, probably. Uh, no, I don't see it. It doesn't say anything. It does say a creature prone to violence might attack you. Another creature might seek retribution in other ways at the DM's discretion, depending on the nature of your interaction. Yeah, all, all you get is advantage on charisma checks against the creature. But it's not a charm. It just gives yeah. you advantage on... So you're kind of casting Still friendship checks. on yourself. Yeah. I'm going to stop pretending I'm in a cocoon because it's taking forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, there. Yeah. Just so I can kind of get my sickle and cut him out real quick. He's probably suffocating. Well, I mean, okay. then Willem's going to attack us. If, if you guys can get that spider out of my way, I can unpoison him because obviously he's been poisoned with that venom. I mean, the spider in our way is the whole issue. <laughs> well, it's his issue, and I'm I'm the healer, so. Willem kind of holds Nobody up keep a. Him a occupied. <laughs> he holds up a leg. You know, he's he's doing this. Talk to the name well, there you go, Riley. Alive, I'm just gonna ask <laughs> Willem if he's still alive. Well, I'm, he nods. He's alive. And then he holds up a hand this? again. Uh, so frustrating. I'm just going to cast the text thoughts so we can talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and he, he doesn't resist. So if you want to... Willem, Willem is thinking... So I'll just... ask him out loud. Okay. okay. What is Willem thinking? Surface thoughts. He's thinking, man, just, just, I just need a little more time. Just give me a little more time. A little more time for what? He'll be, he'll be awake soon. He can cut himself out. What are, what are you, you doing, doing here? <laughs> what, what am, you're asking Willem, what are you doing here? Yeah. What are you doing <clears throat> to him? Yeah. What are you doing to him? giving him power part of his contract Mm. well as i said not his lawyer um he'll be up soon will he be okay all right okay i don't want to report any of this turn around and look at you guys like he'll be all right i'm gonna go finish the waffles and just kind of waddle out of the (laughs) room (laughs) okay uh and at this point, Chertovir, you you wake up, and you you're uh, you're in in a cocoon. Um, make a uh, if you're trying to if you want to get out of it, make a strength check to just kind of rip it off. Strength check. I have rolled a four. I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. so you you yeah, you guys see him struggling to get out, uh, and Willem kind of steps aside. If you want to help him, you can. You can Please. pull that the cocoon off of him now. Uh, 
Is anybody trying to release me? <laughs> yeah. I'm eating waffles. I, just, yeah, I, 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 I got my sickle. Yeah. I'll just okay. Gonna... Make a dexterity check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, cut him and he's spraying blood. Like, yeah. well, we use all of our spells for the. It, oh, it, does, the cocoon, <laughs> does the cocoon bleed or is that true? <laughs> Shit. Okay, uh, the 20. Yeah, yeah, you're able to, uh, like a surgeon, 11. cutting for the very first time. Oh, you're, uh, oh. you're able to to uh, to cut open. Wow. That's a weird L song, but you're able to cut open the uh, the 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 cocoon, and you see Cherduvir there. And uh, the first thing you notice about him is he has compound eyes, like a fly. Third uh, over you can see in uh, you can oh. now you can see in in 180 degrees, and 180 you, degrees. so you have a you have, a, have advantage on perception checks while you're uh, you know f- what that you're where you're using your sight. Guys, I I feel strange. It's like it looks strange. <clears throat> whoa, what what happened? What what did that spider do to me, Willem? What did you do to me? I, I remember something. I remember I was transported back to... Oh, there it is. You were transported Gostas. with Willem. Gostas, yeah. I, 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 I've seen it happen before. I think, I think I remember something about Gostas telling me that he was giving me a, a spell to open a portal once we need to send back a soul. And he said he was going to give me some power so and, and when you sat up, th- there was a paper lying on your chest, and it kind of rolled off of you. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> got the paper right here. It says, "Scroll of Gate." Okay, I'll put that in my pocket. Like I, I'm, I'm freaking out, guys. I'm seeing 180 degrees. This is well, strange. Well, what- here, calm down. You have a visitor. Oh, oh, Riley, is that you? Uh, I really need to talk to you. <laughs> uh, I'm like, what? What happened to my face, guys? I'm just on the table, shaking my seagull head, making eye contact with Joe Devere. Like, I hope this this is it, temporary. it appears that this is the result of your making a pact with the Gulfs. <laughs> By the way, uh, my name is Riley Masters. I'm, I am a. Um, I'm I'm the the uh, representative of the fifth, and I'm also I also work for the Jericho organization. I came here early to investigate this pact that you made. Well, uh, yes. So I, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, I have a lot of stuff to tell you. Uh, first of all, that spider over there um, is from the Gulfs, and the reason I, why that I gathered as much. Yeah, the reason why that creature is here is because we went on a Jericho mission to Africa in your fifth dominion, where mm-hmm. there was this uh, uh, Gregory's Folly. You might be aware of that from your. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, yep, I, I know all that part. Um, yes. So Tressa was with us and she, we had to go all the way down to close uh, a gate responsible for the extermination of an almost an entire. Jericho squad. Actually, and two squads. Two squads. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, I was able to successfully close the gate. It took some bargaining, uh, which I am not proud of, but I left the gate stone with Tressa. So she has, she knows that the gate is closed. And um, yeah, so we, we took care of that problem. What do you want to know? Well, the the part that you kind of skipped over is the the bargaining. Uh, according to Tressa, you first the first thing you did was offer up the souls of fallen Jericho squad members. No, that's that's not true. That's not true. I thought we Tressa and I talked about that. I was offering, you know, that Gregory's folly is full of dead people. Um, we actually defeated uh, Gregorius 
and Leopardi, uh, which I believe were behind the creation of that place. And uh, they were, you know, they were demonic uh, possessed creatures and they were from the fifth. And we ended up letting the gulfs take those souls back to hell. Interesting is- report after mm-hmm. you gave them those two and it was, and you discovered that you needed a third body. You said, and this is in Tress's report, your exact words, what about the fallen Jericho squad members? No, that is, that is not accurate. I, I said there were a lot of other dead bodies uh, strewn make about. A, make a deception check. Okay. I don't think I'm decepting anybody, but. Well, it, it, you, he did. You said that. It's in the video. Okay. You said, what about the fallen Jericho squad members? Oh, what, okay. How about them? My deception is 16 plus 117. All right. And I got to get back to. Yeah, I was editing it. And I'm like, holy crap. You actually said that. Okay. Okay. I, I, I have yeah, to. Yeah. So um, she says, okay, well, if Tressa is lying, then what did you say? Well, it was a complicated situation. At the time, we were dealing with uh, two demons, one of which was an extremely powerful demon um, who had been wounded by Cassius. And I don't think there was any way that we could have gotten out of it. And actually, Ralph was willing to sacrifice his own soul to allow us to escape that because there was no other way that we could escape that level. Uh, I don't think combat would have been an option. Um, If I said that, I explained to Tressa that what I meant was, she she told me, don't you dare. And I was like, okay, uh, what about um, the other souls of the other bodies? But unfortunately, at that point, we realized from the demon that the bodies had to be uh, freshly dead uh, in the last 24, 48 hours. So once once I realized that uh, none of the other victims, the other dead bodies, were available to to offer, uh, I offered myself. So I, you know, I completely understood where Tressa is coming from, but I respected her wishes and I I offered myself. So now my soul is in jeopardy. I made that deal with the Gulfs to. Um, offer them Cassius. And I can explain why I offered Cassius. Because Cassius is a corrupt individual. He is in cahoots with uh, the Aboriginal children. He has a Nolianac under his control. And he was the one, and did Tressa tell you that he was the one who deliberately left the gate open and lied to her about it? He says that that's what she did say that the devils told you that or the the fiends told you that. Okay. Well, she, I talked to her about that. She said that Cassius had told her that it was taken care of, that he had closed the gate. Mm -hmm. And when we got to the ninth level, after two squads were lost, it was clear that Cassius did not close the gate. That so, is troubling, and I, uh, I agree with you, and we don't have an answer for that. And I've closed the gate, and not only did I close the gate, after I explained my position to Tressa, I left her with the stone that keeps the gate closed. So I think that was a token of good faith from me, because she was very suspicious of Cassius. And when I proposed to close the gate, she told me, well, Cassius told me he had closed the gate, and he didn't. So I want to be here when you do it. And I allowed her to be there and I gave her the rock, the stone for the circle. So she is in possession of that. So the only creature that has not gone back to hell is that spider. And, um, you know, you see my face, you see what happened to me. You see those webs over there. I was being reminded last night that I do have to follow on that promise. Um, And that my soul is in danger, but... Tressa, of course, was horrified with the idea of offering up 
her fallen teammates, you know, to hell and rightfully so. And I know that you were in a difficult situation and we can, we can move past that part because it sounds, seemed like a desperate act uh, to save your friend and it didn't, <clears throat> nothing came of it. So let's let that part go. But the part that <clears throat> I'm still struggling with is this judgment on Cassius Breyer. Uh, now I, I know him a little only because of my political position. Um, but can we without question condemn him to hell based on some su some suspicions that we have on him? I mean, can we do that to anyone? Well, that's why we're going to go out and find out, get some, we're, we're hunting evidence. Mm -hmm. Well, not only, it seems very clear that he <laughs> is behind my brother's uh, Drovo's kidnapping. He seems is, like I said, he is connected to the Aboriginal children. He is in control of a Nullian Act. He tried to force my brother, once he was kidnapped, to sign a document uh, that he would not pursue any other political actions. And he is my brother's main opponent. And not only that, he told Drovo, I mean, you can ask Drovo, that he would, if we tried to do anything or attempted to, to confront him about any of this, that he would out the entire Jericho agency as being spies for the Fifth Dominion without any proof of his own. So and when you, when she hears that, her face just totally gets pale and she just kind of looks around. And, and, and I, I don't uh, see why we're discussing so much, like who's guilty, who's innocent, all of this. I don't, why does any of this matter? The way I see it, it's a choice. We can send Cho Devere to the Gulf or we can send Cassius Breyer to the Gulf. And I prefer Cho Devere not to go to the Gulf. Aww, I mean, it has nothing cute. to do with a trial. Awesome. Thank you. Very, very I appreciate it. Seems like our hands are tied at this point, or they would be if I had them. Also, when you think about it, even if I did say that I was willing to offer a, a dead soul to the Gulfs, I also saved another Jericho agent from going into the Gulfs uh, as a sacrifice himself. And yeah. now my soul is in jeopardy. And if you don't want me to be a part of the team anymore i understand but i will still pursue uh, my uh, agenda to protect my brother and make sure that the second dominion is protected against cassius because he's not he's not a good person in this situation i i've been given the power for jericho to decide whether to allow you to give up cassius briar or not so if not it's going to be you in his place I and I suppose oh, snap. <clears throat> at so this point, do? I don't at this point, I don't feel like I have enough information. Honestly, I don't uh, Drovo and uh, Drovo. She, she says, can you back up any of this at all? And Drovo says, I was kidnapped. It's true. I was kidnapped. Uh, no one involved in the kidnapping mentioned Cassius specifically. Uh, but it doesn't make any sense that it would be anyone else. I mean, first of all, I was being, I was, I was forced to sign a document that said that I would withdraw from the race. Who else would have any kind of vested interest in that except for Cassius? <clears throat> and second, he came to me personally and told me to withdraw from the debate, as my brother said, or he would expose the Jericho organization. And uh, that to me is a big, uh, a big threat. And he more than anyone else knows this organization. He could do it. Well, were you supposed to meet him again? To let him know whether you would do that or not? We could have made a arrange a meeting and let no, you. Riley, there's no need. Witness there's for no, yourself. There was no need for me to meet him. He's, if I don't show up to the debate or he hears that I'm that I've withdrawn from the campaign, that's all he needs to know. If I show up, then he knows that I didn't agree. And Drovo, he has also been uh, very connected to the Aboriginal children, which are an isolationist, nativist kind of group of cult that is trying to break up 
you know, make sure that the unified dominions are no longer unified. And he's attacked uh, Earth by leaving the gate open for the gulfs. So as a representative of the fifth dominion, you should be very concerned about that because hell was walking Earth and we stopped it. I am concerned about that. But we don't know 100% that that's what happened. All we know is that demons got into this hell that was invented to attract demons. The stones in the circle, after Tressa left and after Cassius said that he had taken care of it, they were open in a way that allowed not just things to come into, but other things to go through. So the, the two-way system of the gate was open. Why would Cassius do that? And what you remember is it was it was set so that they could come out with. Oh they wait, wait, get wait. Back. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. So yeah, they were they were supposed to just he he left it so the gulfs could go through it into the fifth, but not return. So every time a demon would go through the portal, he was actually stuck inside that hell, and you know. Uh, it, 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 yes. So yes, basically, instead of closing it so they couldn't come through, he left it so they could they could come through, but nobody could go back to the other side. Can any so, of the rest of you corroborate this? Is that correct? Yes. Seems correct to me. His, his job. You guys, so I that really seems think like we need to buy a camera and start that bringing seems it like evidence that uh, <laughs> instead of closing the gate, that it was deliberately sabotaged. Yes. I mean, that's what it looks like to us. And, and uh, Riley, can I tell you something in private? Uh, yes, of course. So I approach Riley and I tell her, look, Riley, as an erythemic, my will is my bond. My word is my bond. But to be honest, I, I did what I had to do to get the gate closed. This is just one demon spider. All I want to know is what's going on with Cassius. I, I want to get to the bottom of this. I, I'm i not willing to just grab him and throw him into the gulfs without actually making sure that he is proven guilty. Um, it, it seems like I have this psychic connection to, to the demons in hell right now. And you see, look at my face. I mean, they've, they've turned me into a freak. And what I happens need to... when you teleport with bugs? You're yeah. not there. Jonathan's not there. Yeah, but <clears throat> but I I, I just want read everybody's I, thoughts though. <laughs> I think that Surface we can stuff. mutually help each other. We can help the Jericho organization because if Cassius, he's a very popular politician, if he starts accusing things to Jericho, the the great unwashed of the Second Dominion will totally fall for it, and um, we really need to make sure. We understand why he's doing this and what's his like overarching goal. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Okay, persuasion. A persuasion check. Okay, that is. Okay, I've rolled uh, eight plus one nine, and the second roll is four plus one five. So I got a nine. Oh, okay. Well, everyone's distracted. I'm probably done eating as much as I can, and now I'm just shoving the rest of the waffles in Willem's face, like a baby. You know, bird. you make some good points, <laughs> and I think that what we have to do is uh, get through this debate, and then we'll regroup and and discuss it after. Um, okay. I have some questions of my own, and and I'd like to take today to see if I can track him down and ask them. Makes I sense. appreciate you all eventually getting, uh, telling me the truth and what happened. I, I believe, I believe you. And I think that, um, this is a, this is a difficult, difficult situation and that Cassius may be a threat. Like you say, I'm glad you see um, it my way. And I apologize I wasn't aware of exactly the rules of the gulfs in terms of bargaining. And uh, I, I never really meant to offer the souls of the Jericho squad. Um, that's why I took it upon myself to, to promise my own soul. 
Yeah. And and that that part of the accusation, while now I see your your that the the desperate situation that you were in and your motivation, I can kind of see what happened there. And yeah. because nothing came of it, I think that we should just let that one go. Uh maybe Tressa may not be able to do that, but but I, I see your your point of view. Oh, I hope Tressa finds peace. I know she went through a lot and uh I appreciate that. All right. Well, uh thank you. She she kind of uh steps back out and says, Thank you, Bentley, for the waffles. I need to uh I need to head out and see if I can track down Cassius before this uh before the debate. So I'll if if I hear anything or that uh one way or the other, I'll let you know what I find out. Uh otherwise I'll see you there. I'm gonna try to stealthily follow her while she goes to look for Cassius. Okay. And and uh, is there any, anything because you guys have the rest of the day and then the debate will be in the morning. So is there anything else the rest of you guys want to do during that time? Uh, I don't know. Get back and watch some more VHSs. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, attune myself to my sword and uh, and look at my spell book. Okay. All right, and. Um... Zoe? Uh, well, I, I just have a new spell that I can practice, but that's about it. Okay. And, and I'm music? Sure I need it at some point. <clears throat> I am going to go and probably meditate somewhere because that was a mess. Okay. And I All feel right. like I learned a lot about my uh, teammates. Teammates. Right. Uh, so Jonathan, make a stealth check. And as needed, I don't know how long it's going to take to follow her. I will turn invisible. Oh, um, as we'll make needed. a stealth check with, with advantage then. That didn't work out that well. 14. <laughs> okay. Yeah. She says, I know you're up there. I'm, I'm not that, say whatever anything. and she just keeps on she, she keeps on going admit nothing yeah so she she heads she's heading up the hill towards the castle and at this point if you guys are okay you want to take a break and then we'll mm -hmm. uh we'll come back and uh deal with the debate and stuff after okay If you like the character artwork for Jericho Squad, check out the art of Asya Yordanova. And Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. If you like the intro theme, check out music by composer Ben Warren, who's a good friend of the Clive Barker podcast. In-game music provided by Tabletop Audio. Joe and Catalina come from Little Spark Films, who recently helped with Joe Bob Briggs's The Last Drive-In on Shudder. Check out Catalina Carita's Barker and Briefs where she reads Clive Barker books. She's currently reading Clive Barker's A to Z of Horror, which BarkerCast is also revisiting with our audio commentaries. These make great companion pieces together. And finally, if you want to support us at the BarkerCast, a great way to do that and show us off is the BarkerCast Tee Public Store. We've got a Jericho Squad crew shirt. We've got uh, Cenobium. We've got uh, Marcus's pinhead design. There's all kinds of great designs and they're and they're not just t-shirts either so please go check it out uh, get something and support us thanks i was recently asked to help moderate the new facebook group clive barker book club if you like discussion of clive's books you should check it out <laughs> all right that's <laughs> Okay, let's okay. go to this debate. All right. 
Well, no, uh, no, I, the... I gotta spy. Oh yeah, first. we gotta resolve Jonathan's. Uh, I'm spying. Following her, so <clears throat> you followed her throughout the day. Uh, she went into the castle, um, asked around. There, um, nobody seemed to know where Cassius was. Uh, they said. All they know is that he's going to be on time for the debate, but they don't know where he is or how she could talk to him. Well, that was anticlimactic yeah. for both of us, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she's uh, she's she's uh, she just kind of yells out to you, "I'm staying here. I'll see you Silence. all tomorrow." Oh, I doubt she'll see me. Okay. I'll head back. Um, you guys want to, we were asked to come up with questions. Um, I was still thinking of trying to at least ask one leading question that I can change his answer to at the debate to try to publicly embarrass him in some way or publicly reveal something undesirable. Mm. I feel like for the Second Dominion uh, audience, maybe something connected to a Nolianac, maybe, maybe ask him what's his connection to the return of the Nolianax. Well, oh, I think you can frame it as, you know, we've heard murmurings of X, Y, Z happening. Mm. What is your opinion of this? More of like from the view standpoint of a reporter, because we oh. need to frame the question so that he is not feeling threatened. I heard that there's a tape of a Nullinac peeing on Cassius. How do you reply to that? <laughs> was it peeing on Cassius? It was peeing on another Nullinac on the bed. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Everyone but... consented and everyone was of age. Yeah, okay. Kink shaming. Um, um, I can ask boxers or briefs. So. Well, we just asked, you could just stand up and ask, did you kidnap my brother? And I could just come up with like kind of a dismissive affirmative answer because mm. if i am like major illusioning his answer over top of his real answer we can get him to say whatever we want like make him say something like uh you know uh, i i did what i have to do because uh you people need guidance and i'm the only one who can you know offer yeah something like that. are something you guys doing, having like this de debate in front of drovo as well Oh, shoot. Is he there? I think yes. I have established my unwillingness to have any sort of conversation, planning conversations in front of audiences. Because I, I think that's silly. Wait, so, so Drobo is staying at the Jericho headquarters? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. I thought he was going to leave and we could get a break and could plan. Yeah. Now I we thought we were sneak just off kind of meeting room. outside of our rooms and just, just connecting with each other. I, I didn't know that Drovo was already out of his room, too. Now we're in my room. I'm, we're going to go pick a video to watch. <laughs> yeah, no, we're in his room because he's telling us what he saw, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's cool. established yeah, I just wanted not... to get an idea of what was happening and yep. where, where if, if Drovo is involved in the conversation or not. Absolutely not. Okay. Would it be possible for one of us what? to basically, I hate to say go undercover because that sounds so cheesy, but um, basically act like they're defecting to him and actually be a spy. Mm, that's actually an interesting idea. And, and is Bentley yeah. involved in this conversation or is he also out? I would say no. Okay. He's probably in the kitchen. I right? want to keep stuff to just Jericho squad. Yeah. Well, he, not Will or Mike. He, he is Jericho squad. <laughs> well, our yeah. squad. <laughs> okay all right Operation i think of him more as staff <laughs> i i'm not more like yeah i don't really get your human organizational structures i'm just trying to look out for my friends you're Aww. a more evolved seagull We're actually there's only now. there's only one human in all out of the whole group or yeah, Zoe, hominid right? whatever <laughs> i don't i don't really get what you guys make i think i think so Zoe, did you say that to us? Did you did you suggest that to us that you might uh, yeah, try I mean, to I'm infiltrate? Yeah, i with you guys because you know if if he actually is trying to get rid of the squad, then it might behoove us to make him think it might be a little bit easier than he thought. Well, yeah. no one can find him. 
you know, I was trying to go spy. And, and you're being oh, more of a Riley rogue. couldn't find him. Yeah, well, you well, being what, more I, of a what rogue. I'm saying is that at the at the debate, when we have our time for questions, mm -hmm. you know, one of us can be like, I, I hate to say backing him up or like playing into the kind of questions that he would uh, uh, really like to, you know, use as his propaganda. Mm. Um, but basically kind of, you know, worm their way in and make him think that maybe the, the team isn't as cohesive as he thought they were. And so it'll be a lot easier to, you know, get rid of them or whatever. So you'd be starting that to gain some sympathy from Cassius and maybe have him allow you to infiltrate his group? Yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. I think maybe nice. after the debate, I think we have a limited number of debate questions. So I think we should use those wisely yeah but i like, always i like her idea okay. to have someone inside would be interesting so yeah yeah I so agree. But what question should i use to kind of get on his good graces uh, hmm. what, Maybe. What, what would feed his ego do you think because that's what i'm going to have to be using is his ego against probably him. to question why the, the jericho organization probably to fall into his own like ideas of that we're spying somehow. Maybe you could say, well, I've been in the team for a long time. I still don't know what we do. Uh, I don't know who I report to, you know, something okay. like that. All right. You know? Yeah, that's a really good idea. What do you, what do you, what do the rest of you think? What do you think, Brent? Um, I, yeah, I think we do that. Um, I think what we do kind of depends on how we want to infiltrate and for how long. Right. Then who do you want to send? Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's Zoe's idea, I guess she should be the one to infiltrate. Because the debate may end up being something that we really don't have a chance to engage in combat with anybody. Uh, maybe it'll just turn out I to be. I think that's a... the ideal. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The idea is to not engage in combat with anybody. Right. Um, right. So, and each of us that is in the VIP section gets one question. So okay. that means Zoe gets a question, Musette, Ralph, and Chaudhavir. Each one of us gets our own question. And uh, honestly, I was just going to kind of play it by ear because we don't know what they're even going to talk about. Mm -hmm. I think I would ask him uh, what's his connection to my brother's uh, uh, kidnapping. I mean, he's probably going to blow it off, but I'll definitely say then why why were you, you know, why were my brother's kidnappers uh, forcing him to sign something saying that he was going to leave the political race against you? <laughs> it just points to you. And maybe you should ask your question last because. No, because then like Zoe a... could get up and say, there's no proof that you, that Cassius kidnapped um, your brother. Because then she would get good graces, but also it just we're keep mentioning the subject so it's in the public discourse at least right if half the questions are about the kidnapping suddenly the campaign's about the kidnapping mm -hmm. but then zoe can play devil's advocate and work for and show that we're fractious and then okay. work her way in yeah like yeah that's interesting so instead of bringing the attention onto the jericho organization mm -hmm. she could just question us saying oh well there's no proof about that and maybe he would be like well interesting and, but then and people also, it shows we're not kidnapping. on a united front, right? Which helps right. build yeah. Zoe's case, apparently. Yeah, and then and then so and the question where you would work your sway magic there, uh, Brandt, would be um, something to discredit him in terms of like what are his intentions, right? So, like, ask him why, um, you know, why he's trying to be so. I'm sorry, what, were, what was the thing that we agreed on that we we're going to ask him something about the, the Aboriginal children or in the Nullion Act or something? And that he would reply because force is needed or something like that? Well, that was the kidnapping of your brother. Ugh. Okay, okay, got it. And so if we're not going to admit that on stage, I mean, I can, right. and I can also subtly support him from the sidelines and go in as a potential infiltrator. Okay, so I'll ask him about. Um, uh, I'll ask him about his connection to the Aboriginal. Ch um, I'll ask him. What? Am, what is my question? I'll ask him about the Aboriginal children and the Nullianak. Right. Nullianak. 
Do we agree on that? Sure. Yes, we agree about that. And Musette and Ralph uh, are not going to uh, format their questions just yet. You have then two questions that can be reformatted when we get there. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Are you guys well, ready? Who's actually asking about the kidnapping? Ah, what'd you say? Who's asking about the kidnapping? I thought either, excuse me, Musette or Ralph was going to do that. Oh, I thought Trudevere was. Sorry. He's okay. Asking a so question. I'll ask him. I'll ask him about the kidnapping. I'll okay. confront him with the fact that he, that he, the kidnappers try to make my brother leave the race, and that would only benefit him. Mm. And and then you can work your sway in having him somehow admit that he was involved in that, because we need force sometimes to like protect the people or whatever. Make him sound fascist on his reply. Mm -hmm. All right, got it. Okay, I'm asking about my so, brother's kidnapping. You'll ask about your brother. Zoe will play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no proof. Right. And then you can work your magic to make it seem like he actually does admit to something about that. Cool. And that would send the people off like, you know, like, what the hell is going on? We can't trust this guy. Does that make sense? It does, but I'm not sure I need to, with this line of questioning, I'm not sure I need to fake an answer. Well, he's probably going to say he had nothing to do with it, right? He's probably yeah. going to say, well, I no, don't He's not going to be answer. honest. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it depends on his uh, answer. Yeah. And so I was thinking, you know, maybe, like, right, I'm kind of sideline, sideline magic support guy. But I probably only get one chance, as you pointed out, to do something. And so if if me reframing his answer isn't necessarily more damning than him having to deny that he kidnapped somebody on stage for three questions in a row. Right. And we're, I mean, and we're not even sure that he will maybe I should. not, not uh, overcome your spell. Yeah. And, and so I was just thinking maybe I could stand by. We could come up with or I could stand by for another role. Okay. Because we got um, Willem to handle as well. And I guess public got a kid thing is off the table. Is Willem in the room with you guys? Right. Or is he also guys, out? Willem's out. Okay. It's just 77 members. <clears throat> I don't know, guys. Right. This is this is weird because I feel like the debate I mean, is the line. Unless he's going to bring in like the children of the Aboriginal or something, uh, the Aboriginal children and and then Nolianak into it, we're not going to get into a bite uh, battle. He's not going to admit to any wrongdoing. Uh, if we try to use spells to make it seem like he's admitting to something, it's probably going to backfire on us, make it seem like, oh, see, they're trying to control mm -hmm. the situation. You know, it'll just make us look bad. But I, people, I'm not from here, so do people even common people even know about the aboriginal children children and why that would be a bad thing or yeah I really that, know why nullianax would be a bad thing like is this common knowledge enough well they're scared of the nullianax because once the erasure fell down and the first dominion they were supposed to come in and destroy everything um i don't think they actually did though right mm -hmm. i don't think they actually came out in the book in the magica i think gentle ended up just killing the uh the hive mind of the nolianax but they were seen as like the, the the manifestation of the the unbeheld's power so yeah hmm. and, and i, I don't think anybody is, is happy if nolianax come back because that means that something is going on in terms of the goddess's power being reduced and the the power of Apeximendios somehow resurging um, into like a more isolationist, uh, ununified dominion thing that seems to be what uh, what what Cassius is going for too. Maybe he's trying to take the the place of the um, of Apeximendios. I don't know. I mean, yeah, and do, so it does the name publicly. Hapex and Mendios have enough power. Like, oh, yeah, enough definitely. fear that like, the yes, people definitely. are not still on the fence about. Well, guess, yeah. it's <laughs> a mixed it's bag. Streets, but Jonathan because doesn't know that. for a lot of these people, Hapex and Mendios was the, the god, the creator, right? So I think mm -hmm. this is one of those things that it's like telling everybody that Lucifer is Satan, but there's still people who worship Lucifer. 
And some people say, oh, yeah, Lucifer was Satan. He was terrible. So I don't, I don't know. Um, I, who in here has read Imagica? <laughs> I haven't finished it. Okay. I read half of it. Okay. <laughs> So that that kind of like gets into the whole thing, but somehow for well, some characters, yeah. And I'm not looking for like storyline. I'm thinking in game. You know what's Cho Devere's opinion of what the common man, like what would disturb the common person, or you know people voting at the play, not necessarily like what's what actually happened. Well, you know, I, I think... assume the commoner is not like privy to. The, okay. the stuff from the novel of imagine right? right i think there was a lot of misery yeah. under the uh, autark's dominion mm -hmm. i think that he was seen as someone who was grasping for power and that he was like destroying entire villages because if they didn't do it this way then they would be destroyed. okay yeah there was the village destroying that's pretty so <laughs> So I think that uh, it wasn't just one village. Uh, it was yeah. the, whole, the political prisoners and all that. I think that people don't want to see a dictator come back to power. But some so people that, love that stuff. Uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. I guess some do. But. So we need something everybody hates. Cults? I don't know. I yeah. mean, when you go at, about it that way, then people could also be like a lot of people would support the Aboriginal children because they have been active. People have known about mm -hmm. them. They're kind of this isolationist force that keeps saying, yeah, you know, magica for the Imagicans, you know. Um, yeah, we need to make, a, make a, a magica political. great again. What does the polling say? Like, shit, we got a debate. Say? We haven't done any <laughs> political research. <Dang. laughs> I know. Well, I'm supposed to know like, about this stuff. I could, I could make his make him answer that he just wants to be the new Hippocrates Mendius and the entire crowd cheers. And we're like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> that it, all it all depends on the game, on the dungeon master. I don't know what he's going to make the crowd react to. So, but okay, that's meta. Well, meta let's figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. So I guess at this point, do we need to talk to Bentley? We don't need to tell him all of our ideas, but we do yeah, need to mine him for information. Okay. I definitely want we to confront him. the dog come out. Is Wag the dog in 98? Oh, shit. Wait, hold on. We <laughs> actually have Wag it. We have it right him. here. <laughs> hold the phone. Because we like just watched it the what other day. What movie is that? It's Wag called the Wag dog. the Dog. It's uh, uh, Dustin camera. Hoffman, Robert, Robert De Niro. Oh, it's not reading by yet. Barry Levinson. I think it's 97. Um, hold on, what does it say? It says 97 new line, but 98 new line oh. home video. So it came out. Oh, oh. Okay. it came out at home video in 1998. And also, yeah, this probably, is a VHS copy. Oh, uh, he probably has that. So it's we should probably movie. tell it is him really to good. watch the movie and uh, no, see if we can understand. Watch the movie with him and try to pry the political day information right. out of him there in a context of like talking about the movie. How many yeah. hours? With him. Away is the yeah, debate. this is a blockbuster. It's tomorrow uh, so morning, right? Yeah, well, it's it's like midday or early afternoon right now, and it's going to be in the morning. Damn, we slept in. Wait, you said it's well, twelve didn't... noon. You 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 guys didn't exactly sleep in. I mean, Jonathan followed her all the way up. Oh, to it's the 12, castle. 12 a.m. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. No, it's 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 after early afternoon. Yeah. yeah okay. And, you were going to, I mean, I asked everybody what they were doing and people were like watching movies and practicing spells and attuning to things. And got it. Got Jonathan it, got was, it. so yeah. So a few so hours. So the debate ago, is like, tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. yeah. Morning. Okay. Yeah. yeah so we got some time. Let's go mine uh, <laughs> Bentley for some information. <laughs> See, because I've spent, I'm very bookish. I spend all my time in the library. So I'm not in contact with a common uh, First Dominion. And very deceptive and persuasive so Zordorexia. i'll roll either one for and do you, are you also getting drovo him. or just just bentley yeah i'll get drovo i'll be like this I'll is one of my drovo. favorite movies we're gonna watch we're gonna have a debate tomorrow we should watch this what is the okay. what's the movie i don't i don't know if i've seen that so um it's wag <clears throat> the dog there's a presidential election oh so yeah i haven't i haven't seen it creates a fake war it's not real it's only yeah. in the media uh, oh I, I, so, like, I remember when that came out ratings. i remember what okay. it was about now yeah the tagline yeah. the tagline is a comedy about truth 
Justice, and other special effects. It stars yeah. Dustin Hoffman and Robert De Niro. <laughs> That's pretty oh, much okay. it. I probably yeah, should dog, have seen that movie, but I didn't. Yeah, Wag the Dog became kind of like a, a, in the movie, I think it's supposed to be an expression to symbolize that when something goes wrong, like let's say Clinton was going through the the Monica Lewinsky thing and he decided to bomb a country to get in the news and distract people from that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's taking control of the news cycle. Yeah. It's where the tail wags the dog instead of right. the dog yep. wagging the tail. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which I, I do find very amusing watching that movie before the debate while trying to mine it. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you, you know, the last time I tried to watch this movie, I didn't really understand it that well. <laughs> I ended up turning what? it off halfway through. Yeah, yeah. I spent yeah. a lot of time in California, so uh, I know all about politics. Well, that's good. Okay, let's uh, watch this movie. <laughs> okay. Except that hopefully Cassius is not trying to groom an underage girl. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. No such thing yeah. for seagulls, really. It's... Right. And so we're watching with Drovo too. So should I just do like a deception or persuasion role to see how Drovo is, is saying, you know, uh, I like watching movies as much as the next person, but I feel like I should probably be spending my time preparing for the debate. Oh, subject we're touching on. You you kind of broke up there. Uh, what subjects are you thinking of touching on in the debate? Uh, just the the ones that we talked about yesterday. Okay. Uh, that uh, uh, we well also that we've had thirty years of peace with the Uradimek in the uh, in in that position, and we the the goddesses have done nothing but help us. Maybe don't focus too much on the <clears> fact <throat> you're you're maybe common person. We've had 30 years of peace under common people. I don't know. are not common people. In fact, we're very rare. I'm sure Duvir can attest to this. Yes, exactly. Um, there are only a few of the, us left. My point is that you're, you're, uh, you're still making this sound kind of like an autocracy. Well, no, it's, it, it's a representative. But if you're only pulling a pool from a pool of a few elite you know, the same well, bees. Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying. I think that might threaten like some I people. told my brother, uh, uh, I don't think he should um, focus on continuing the same thing that's been going on, but focus on why he's not right for the job. Like, like Ca- why Cassius is not right for the job. Not just say that you know, well, it's always been an erythemic, and I'm an erythemic, so I should be the well, one to represent. It's, it's honestly the same argument, isn't it? I mean, the the representative of the First Dominion is a spiritual position, and Cassius, I don't believe, is a spiritual man. Not in, not in the way he's, that. Uh, I, but he's been indirectly or uh, uh, behind the shadows. He's been trying to bring this nativism into the discussion that is a fake thing that he created like like trying to make it seem like he's trying to overtake the position as representative of the first dominion because he supports the aboriginal children um to lead us in that he's trying to bring a populist group to a system in making uh, overtaking that into saying that well, I'm, I'm the the one who really cares about the spirit, you know. So I think we need to discredit that position from him. We need to to prove why he's not the the best candidate because he's just working on his own agenda, and he's actually been trying actively to subvert democracy. But how are we going to prove that? Because, you know, I know, because the only proof we have is Drovo saying that he told me to drop out of the race or he's going to lie about us. Uh, and it's, it's like the, a he said, she said. It's just like in the movie. But maybe his maybe his answers will belie his true motivations. I think that maybe the people, they will. Hopefully the people can see through his. Uh, his act. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm all about confronting him. Um, I think dragging out the truth might cause a reaction from him and he might betray himself. Yes, I, that's what I'm hoping. I, I, we have to put faith in our system. Uh, yeah, about that. I mean, you know, the, 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 the very nature of populism, it, it relies on people's ignorance about certain issues to take advantage of that for political dividends. But uh, so I think you have a very optimistic approach. But yeah, let's hope for the best. Let's try to bring some hard questions to the table. Yeah, I think that would be great. I mean, you're a respected, you know, person. Uh, you're a respected member of, of Azordorex and uh, Erethemek Kesprit. So I hope that that brings some weight to it. I mean, if he brings up any, any issues about the Jericho organization, we can always bring up that he was a member of a squad for several years. You know, maybe Bentley should be with us as well, um, that he could uh, confirm that. I plan to be there, yes. Okay, well, I'll great, be there. Bentley. All right, so you can be uh, a backing force in case he decides to start slandering the Jericho organization. You can say that, hey, you were a part of it for a long time. We did all these things together. He's so, just you know, going to say, yeah, that's how I know it's bad and why I left it. And why I'm hoping I we don't have it. to debate about the Jericho squad because, honestly, people recognize me as a, as a, a shopkeeper. Oh, that's that right. made a nice reveal for everyone. I forgot. No one would expect it. you. But what if it destroys your shop? And people it, don't it know could. that that Riley is uh, with the Jericho organization, right? They just know her as the representative of the First Dominion. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Is Riley going to be and, there? Yes. Drovo, uh, yeah. Drovo says, actually, Jonathan makes a point. I mean, I think that. There are elements of the population that do see us, Eurytimex, as, as uh, elites. Yeah, there's no way around that. Uh, we are kind of like live in a separate neighborhood and everything. So we just do that to protect ourselves. There's very few of us left. Um, but we, we should be representatives of the First Dominion. We, that's where we're from. We, our, our people came from there. That's true. That's true. Well, other you know, peoples came from there too. Well, if populism tries to to bring in the the nature of 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 who should represent the First Dominion, then you also stand an advantage against um, Cassius's populism because. Populism tends to be conservative, and as such, we are the uh, the the proven you know record of being representatives of the First Dominion. So it all depends on how the crowd is 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 going to sway to how they're going to respond to the debate. So as Cassius, he's human, correct? But he's not human from the fifth. Right. Yeah. Well, we can always bring that up. Say, hey, you're, we already have a representative of the Fifth Dominion. It's Riley. Why are you no, trying to become not Fifth? Hmm? And so he is. That's what I was thinking of trying to attack him on. He's not of the Fifth. So he is. I think he definitely has a distinct populist advantage. He, just um, because he's kind of a commoner. Would, would know that he kind of popped up um, about 30 years ago, mm -hmm. but nobody really knows exactly where he came from. Okay. And Drovo. So I, I do bring that up, that it's very strange that, uh, that you know, n the thing is, people don't really know a lot about him. They just know that he started, you know, gaining some power, uh, mostly through influencing people through the support, through his support of the uh, Aboriginal children. And, of course, you know, he started out with the Jericho squad. That, that seems to be clear. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, we can always ask, ask to, to what is his claim to being a representative of the, of the First Dominion? You know, what, what's your claim? You're not 
you're not one of us. You're not, where did you come from? That will definitely put him on the spot. Uh, it could. I, I suppose it depends on what his answer is. We do need to know more about Cassius. We do. Yeah. So I guess we need to get to the debate and try to find a way to either follow him after the debate. Maybe one of us can try to infiltrate. And, um, and uh, the debate is, the format of the debate is I don't, I don't talk to him. I only answer questions from the audience and same with him. So he and I are not going to be responding to each other. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, I mean, the people are going to vote the way they're going to vote. We can't really control that, nor do we want to. Uh, what we want to do is expose him uh, or put him in a spot where he will accidentally reveal his true intentions. So I guess we just have to go to the debate and see what's going mm -hmm. on. But just in case, I mean, we can always, you know, like the movie we're watching, we can always come up with something like we can always bring up what uh, what happened in the Fifth Dominion and his involvement as a way of distracting from the fact that uh, he might try to bring up a fake a fake accusation against uh, Jericho squad. And ours is true. His is not. All right. I still hope so, that we don't have to talk about Jericho at all. Yeah. I will do everything I can to make sure no one speaks of Jericho squad. Okay. Okay. I mean, he's the one who's just threatening to bring that into the conversation. Mm -hmm. But if we yeah. just keep it, keep it as a, a you know, mentioning the, uh, his connection to the Aboriginal children and the possibility that he's, you know, using a Nullianac, uh, maybe that will, the people will definitely be interested to know in his explanation about that. All right. So at this point, um, do you want to head, uh, fast forward to the, to the debate? Yes, please. Well, yeah, I was going to, well, we're the, mo the movie there. I wanted to get some public opinion information on a couple things. Just like what is public opinion of Hexamendios in general um, and the Aboriginal children and Eurythmetics and the government in general. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, so, and, and uh, Jose knows a lot of this and, and Sherdovir would also know that um, that uh, Hepexamendios was a convenient god because he was the one god that you could pray to for everything. So in that respect, people liked him because he was uh, because he wasn't complicated, and you didn't have like a goddess that was for the mountains and another one that mm -hmm. was for the sea, and a, and a god for this and a god for that. You had one one convenient god that you could pray to for everything. But the bad thing is that he he allowed the autark to rule for hundreds of years and uh, just slaughtering people indiscriminately and and uh, ruling over everyone. Yeah, that was definitely the fear of God, uh, like they usually say, which is not there with the goddesses. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want to pick a fight with the goddesses, but they're they've yeah. uh, they've been for the past 30 years, they've helped. Is order X prosper, um, and they've they've uh, and the rest of the of the dominions have healed uh, as far as like they they're not living in terror anymore. I mean, there's I mean, the only there's inconvenient streams and rivers running through people's houses and stuff, but uh, other than that, everything's pretty good. Okay, and then are the Aboriginal children common knowledge enough to have a opinion on or? No. no, no. I mean, okay. yeah. I think Chertovir would would uh, was kind of surprised to hear that phrase coming around. Okay, um, and then what's the public opinion for your ethics? Um, we're elites. Yeah, uh, we're but also approachable. 
but also kind of a uh, kind of sad because they've been nearly wiped out. Okay, we can play on sympathy. Yeah. And I mean, Musette and Ralph, I mean, you guys are from Midian and you guys can attest what happens when populism goes wrong. I mean, M Musette is a is is a seer kind. Uh, uh, seer kind, seer kind, but Ralph definitely can 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 attest to the fact that I I I would like to help you out on on that area, but I need to remind you, I may be from Midian, but I did not grow up in Midian. Oh, that's right. I have, you don't remember the fall. I, I don't have. I I was being born during the fall. Right. And, but you know I, what it's I, like to be different and to 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 fall prey to like the 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 popular opinion that you know that you're different. Um, well, in the carnival, we were all the same, but treat and treated equally bad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I have no experience in Midian. Other than right. my fucking rock hand on me. <laughs> right. But it's all right. Okay. So okay. it sounds like people are pretty satisfied with how things are going, to answer my last question. Evidently. Yeah. Seems like people are pretty happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess we got to go to the right. debate and see how that plays mm -hmm. out. I'm ready. All right. So um, Bendley pulls out the the big uh, truck with the <laughs> with the um, the bed on the 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 kind of homemade flatbed on the back mm -hmm. of it that's wooden, so that uh, so that there's room for everybody to ride on, and drives you all up to, to the uh, to the castle, where as VIPs you're escorted in um, and. Uh, and and take into your seat and we, oh actually before we get to that i forgot to mention um willem kind of points at at some of your like more obvious weapons and points at his back what's that boy you said you got a secret pocket <laughs> <laughs> and uh no, willem shrinks down to the size of a regular spider and then he grows back up again to his full size oh guys i think he's telling us that we can give him our weapons and he can sneak them into the the debates that would be Pocket uh, spider that all would right, be Rick a good help. let's do it all right okay so he he kind of leans his head down and you can just kind of put stuff on on the furry spot on his back there, the flat area. I put in my automatic rifle that I have. Okay. Just in case. Is anybody else putting any weapons on there? Yeah, I guess I have to put my pistol in there. I gotta put my uh, my pistol, my you know, and my sickle, and. And you have a sword, I, I think, too. I have a sword. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, man. And, so uh, on the way there, I'm just a hammer gonna... count. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm you wouldn't bring fly a hammer above. to hammer to a town hall meeting. And 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 <laughs> Willem, you have to stay out of view, okay? You have to make yourself small, but stay out of view while we're there. And so on the way, I want to use my mobbing special ability and just and i i'll just fly over to there i'm not going to drive with him but i want to yeah. like bring with a whole flock of seagulls so one it's hard to tell which one i am and two it's just normal there's like seagulls around they're trying to steal people's okay. tips there's just okay i want to kind of blend in so i'm not the only seagull just flying around so you're just circling around up above yeah, and I'll just bring a bunch of other seagulls over. And so there's a okay. bunch of seagulls that just, I mean, it's an open air, human ish, other than assume they'd okay. come in. Did you promise and, them there was going to be food? And Zoe, did you yes. hide your weapons with the, with the spider? The only thing I'm going to keep on me is my dagger. Okay. Uh, because it is a holy symbol, everything else can go, honestly. Okay. Since All right. Since with this one spell that I have, just in case I need it, I need a holy symbol. I, it's got to stay with me. Okay, so he kind of cocoons the uh, a web to stick all this stuff onto his back, 
And then he shrinks down and climbs into Chertovir's pocket. Oh, okay. All right, guys. All right. Let's, let's go to the castle. So you're yeah. you're led uh, when you get there, you're led into the uh, VIP area. And you take your seats in the um, in the arena and I'll here I'll I'll share my screen now. Do you guys think we should sit together or should we sit separate from each other? So when we ask questions, it doesn't seem like it's all the same group asking questions. That's a good point. I think we should be separate. So. Yeah, I, I agree. Hey, a session without public technical difficulties is when I'll take. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. fancy guys. How pretty. Yeah. Let's burn it down. No. Oh, he, you were putting other seagulls on there. It looks like. Okay. okay. I see the seagulls. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised, guys. So, so when you get inside, you see uh, Androvo has made his way up to his his uh, his um, podium, and you see Cassius Briar. He's kind of an armored dude uh, with dirty blonde hair. He's got sort of a scraggly beard. Um, he looks like he's probably, you know, late 30s, <coughs> but it's hard to tell. Uh, and behind the behind the uh, table, um, and Churduvir, you would know some of these people. Mm -hmm. uh, the you see <coughs> Riley mm -hmm. is on the far right, yep. and you recognize her. She's got um, she's got kind of a also brownish hair. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, beneath her I see coaxial as well yeah coaxial tasco mm -hmm. <laughs> he he's of beatrix but he's representing the third dominion um huzzah odell oh her <clears throat> her origins are a little mysterious you there there's rumors that she's divine and somehow uh she represents the second dominion and she's kind of the um MC for the event. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Have some water. And um. Oh, uh, Akrete Friedley from Ephatoy is representing the Third Dominion. Oh yeah, little Akrete. Yeah, sure. I know who he is. He was part of the reconciliation, right? Uh, no, it's it's a Crete. It's a different oh, person. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. A Crete, yeah. <clears throat> and there's an empty chair. Uh, that's the seat that's supposed to be filled for the First Dominion. Used to be filled by Kulusu Arai, um, who is now deceased. Uh, around the around the uh, the stadium on the bridges that connect that cross the stream, there are Ethax. Which um, only Churdivir would know Ethax, but they're um, they have sort of squat bodies and big heads with scars all over their heads. They don't feel pain, and they they get used a lot for for as guards. We uh, we met one, didn't we, during one of our adventures? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and um, in in the crowd, you see a, a mix of all kinds of people. Uh, a few of them are wearing robes and they have big heads. But other than that, they're hard to see. Right. Hmm. Okay, well, we're sitting on our VIP section. Yep. Yep, and it looks like we're all <laughs> sitting together and there's no empty, empty seats, so yeah, that's just how that's going to be. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, Rob and I worked really hard on this. We were really hoping you weren't going to try to go circumvent the debate somehow and kidnap him <laughs> elsewhere. Okay. <laughs> they were all, you know, moral. <laughs> okay, so um, <clears throat> Huzzah stands up and she says, welcome everyone to, to the uh, debate and election of the chair of the First Dominion of the Imagica Council. Our candidates today, we have Cassius Breyer and Drovo Dovir. 
Uh, we will start out with opening statements from the two candidates. And in the tradition of the Fifth Dominion, we will flip a coin to decide who goes first. So if somebody wants to roll a six-sided die and, and uh, one through three will be Cassius and four, five, and six will be Drovo. I got a die right here. Okay. All right. I'm rolling it. We got a three. <clears throat> okay. So that's Cassius goes first. And uh, Cassius sort of clears his throat and he says, my fellow devoted friends, to know me and vote for me, you must first know my story. It begins 230 years ago. As a simple maestro's assistant, I helped the Synod so my master could represent the First Dominion. I was so excited to open up the Imagica so we could spread the glory of Hapeximendios across all worlds. But as we all know, the Maestro failed and the Synod was attacked. I myself was hauled into the darkness of the Innovo, where I lived a long and terrible life. I spent 200 years there, teaching myself the magic and the ways of that place in order to survive. I spent 200 years there. Oh, I'm sorry, I said that already. <laughs> I spent 200 years there teaching my, okay, here we go. Teaching myself the magic of the ways there in order to survive until the next attempt at reconciliation. When the Anna appeared, I finally made my escape. It was a dream come true. I had finally come home, but when I returned, I found that our beloved unbeheld was dead. The reconciliation, nothing more than an assassination plot to murder Hapeximendios and drown his beautiful city in the putrid waters of inferior goddesses. Now you know my story and you know where I stand, but there's still hope, friends. Hapeximendios is dead, yes, but a part of his spirit lives on in the aboriginal children. His soldiers, the Nolianax, carry his spirit with them, and with enough faith, enough prayer, and the will to turn back to the one all-powerful God, we can carry a bit of his spirit, make it grow, and we can revive him back to his first dominion. This is why this position is sacred, and not to be entrusted to that faithless man. Vote for me, let my holy work continue, and you will have the most powerful God at your side. You can all be Aboriginal children. So he kind of sits down and she says, Huzzah says, Huzzah is looking a little stricken. Uh, but she says, okay, uh, Drovo, your, your statement, if you will. Drovo says, friends, you know that in the past 30 years, we have had peace with the goddesses here. Their water is not filthy. Uh, their water is cleansing. They have uh, brought peace and, and stopped the terror of the Autark that my opponent was not a part of. He had no idea what life was like during the years that Hapeximendios reigned. And for the past 30 years, it has been a Eurytimek who has represented the First Dominion. Eurytimeks being uh, from that dominion and being your, the spiritual bridge. It's a sacred post and not to be used for other more nefarious designs. Now, because my uh, successor is gone, I reluctantly answered the call to take her place. And I hope that I can do as good a job as she did. So I don't, as far as Hapeximendios goes, Hapeximendios allowed the Autark to terrorize us for hundreds of years. And the goddesses have created peace. And he steps back. <laughs> Huzzah stands up and she says, thank you. All right. Uh, now we can begin with questions from the uh, the VIP audience. 
and anyone out there want to have a question for, and you must direct your question at one of the candidates or statement. Yeah, I'm glad we spent so much time planning on trying to get him to say that. <laughs> 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 well, how are we going to do the middle of this stuff and like opening statement? Yeah, I was thinking the same. So do we only get one question? Yeah, each person can have one one question. You have to decide who you're di directing it towards. Multiple times. Dang. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I know. We didn't decide. Okay, who wants to go first? Should should I open our game right now? Or what, what do you guys no. think? Okay. Um, okay, I'll go. Drobo. Yes. I would like to know what your perfect Sunday afternoon is. My perfect Sunday afternoon? Yes. Well, I'd get kidnapped. <laughs> my, my, my perfect Sunday afternoon is uh, sitting by the peaceful waters of the goddesses. And who uh, are these goddesses? Sorry, that's question two. Uh, are, you, are you from the fifth dominion, my friend? I think you are. Uh, we have Jokalelau, Uma Uma Gamagi. Um, there, um, Tishalule. Uh, their presences are known here in the Dominions. And I'm sorry, I'm truly sorry for you if you don't feel them on your own, uh, in your own place. Heart. I sneak over to Ralph. I say, yeah, that these goddesses, uh, each of them is worshipped in a different dominion, and they control different areas of the Magica. Good to know. <laughs> I have a question for Cassius. I just wanted um, a little bit more background uh, with his closing statement about uh, the Aboriginal children. I'm still really new to this to this world. He says, yes, Fifth Dominion person, what is your question? I just asked it. So you said you have a question on. about the Aboriginal children? Yes, okay. I'd just like more explanation. More explanation. <clears throat> we are all Aboriginal children when we turn our hearts to Hapeximendios' wisdom. When we feel him inside of us, when we pray to him, his spirit grows and he can return to the fifth or to the first dominion. I have a question for Cassius. I am Chudovir, librarian and scholar of the uh, Erethemic Library at the Kesper. Okay. Yes. So we've heard your statements and um, you, you brought up uh, what seems like a clear position in regards of what your plans are for the First Dominion. My brother just said that his first, uh, his perfect Sunday was to uh, spend the day in contemplation of the waters of the goddesses. But I myself had to rescue my brother recently as he was kidnapped by the a cult that call themselves the children, the Aboriginal children. They attacked uh, my brother and I, uh, harmed my brother to the point of like uh, dangerous, s severe wounds, and we had to rescue him. So he was while in their possession he was they try to force him not only did they steal his sword which is a, a huge insult towards uh my people but they were forcing him to sign a document that would benefit only you claiming that he would withdraw from the political race and i want to know do you take responsibility for any of that as you seem to be so connected to the Aboriginal children? And is that your idea of a democratic process? Right, I would like to answer. So I'm going to use one sorcery point to um, 
use the subtle spell med meta magic, so I don't have to use any verbal or semantic components to cast a spell. And then just kind of major image over him, a louder answer than what he gives, and just say, well, under, you know, in the pursuit of Hepex, the worship of Hepexamendius, all rules are secondary. Everything is on the table. So this major image is, is superimposed over the top of him? Well, yeah, or just like his lips. Like, I'm just trying to... But most of the image is the sound of him speaking loudly. Okay. You know, I'm not trying to totally overlay him, and but just make it seem like he's talking. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> 19... Ah. Wow. Okay. Just give me 30 seconds. I'll be right back. But yeah, go on. And yeah, and I'm just trying to give, I'm sure Jonathan is better at this than I am, uh, but just the impression that, you know, all, all laws and everything is secondary, you know, even, even the legitimacy of this election is secondary to the will of Hepexamidios and just try to well, paint how him. How long does this, does this last the spell? He's talking. <laughs> like, What's that? I'm. Oh, you mean the duration? Yeah. Of major image, it's like an hour. I'm pretty sure. Jeez. And I'll keep it up for as long as he's talking. Uh, okay. A, B, C, D. Major so he, image. No, nope, no, nope, I was around. wrong. Concentration up to ten minutes. So up to okay. ten minutes. Still pretty. He's but I'll straight up cast it again. And, and and you can see his arms are different than the arms of the illusion. And he's saying, stop, stop, that's not me, I didn't say that. Well, I'm not, like I said, I'm not super, I'm trying to superimpose over his mouth, like not a full body. Oh. Yeah, I was not trying to overlay. I specifically stated most of the images, the sound of him speaking. Okay. And I'm trying to make sure that that's coming out louder than whatever he's saying. Okay, so he yells, stop, stop, I didn't say that. So how does the crowd react? Um, and if he's being real loud, I'll just have him start singing. Look like he's or sound like he's singing hymns to Apex <laughs> <laughs> The more he, the more he rants and raves, the more excited the hymns will get. He's reciting the <laughs> Lord's prayer. He's, he's having a public, yeah, public religious frenzy freak out. He's That's speaking amazing. in tongues. <laughs> and I'll just keep going. How about doesn't sound like Cassius is on our side. Rob, did you say something? Rabble, rabble, rabble. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Rabble, rabble, rabble. and carrots, peas and carrots, peas and carrots. I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. I thought you did. How is the crowd reacting to this? Rabble, rabble, rabble. Someone pulls a pitchfork out of nowhere. Okay, sorry. I'm stopping. I'm just trying to figure out how he's reacting to this. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll just continue to be ridiculous. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> do we uh, only get to ask one question? Yes! Or do we oh get to my ask... god. Shush. <laughs> or do we get to ask each person one question? No, oh, just one question. You... Okay. Since this is a political <laughs> debate, we can always like yell, uh, follow up question, please, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> So he's what he's trying to say is that you you know you have no evidence that uh, that I kidnapped anyone and and anyone who says that they're they're Aboriginal children and is kidnapping people is not true they're not true members of the faith and that kind of stuff. But it, what, I guess what it sounds like is just him singing and saying weird sounds and stuff. Well, no, uh, that's what that's it sounds like I, to me. When he starts screaming, stop, stop, like. Oh, okay. But. But I still want to do the, you know, it's, I got to go for 10 minutes. I'm running out of ideas. But I got, for the beginning, I want to make him just seem very, you know, give the impression that, of course, all rules are, sec are secondary to the will of Hepexamindios. And even, you know, of course, I am justified in doing whatever I need to do to bring about uh, his return or the dispersion of the pieces that remain among his Aboriginal children. Is the major image... The stay in one place or does it follow I, figured, okay. I could take my action to move around you create an, 
the image of an object, a creature, or some other visible phenomenon that's no larger than 20 foot cube. Image appears a spot you could see within range and last duration. Seems completely real, including sound, smells, and temperature appropriate for the thing depicted. Uh, no damage. As long as you are within range of the illusion, you can use your action to cause the image to move to any other spot within range. As the image changes location, you can alter its appearance so that its movements appear natural for the image. And there's some more stuff. Just, but I'm just like following his lips and making the noise come out. I'm standing up and putting my arm like this, like, are you guys seeing this shit? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to start yelling, like, he's the one who mentioned the return of Nully and X. We all know what they were uh, supposedly meant to do. They would kill us all. And they were the manifestation of a patriarchal god who we feared. We didn't respect him. We feared him. And uh, stands up and she's in silence. You've already had your question. Okay. I sit back down. Who said that? And, uh, and one of the all. robed figures stands up and lowers its hood, and it's a Nolianak. Oh! There, right there. Right there. And it Look says, at that guy. Everyone look! Why are you slandering our kind? This is not slander, Nolianak. Uh, your purpose was to raise and, and destroy and create a, a, a tabula rasa where things would uh, be rebuilt. And that meant the destruction of every one of us in the Imagica. Our if purpose been... is the same as everyone's purpose to do Hepeximendios' will. Yeah, at the cost of all of us, at the cost of our lives. You know, uh, the, the reconciler himself defeated Hepeximendios, his own child uh, causes destruction, okay? Hepeximendios was not all it's cracked up to be. And three more uh, three more hooded figures stand up and lower their hoods and they're all Nolian acts as well. I want to make him look, uh, make Cash just sound like he's saying, oh shit, that's crap. Uh, you know, yes, Hepeximendios' will. We must do his will at all costs. I, I turn to the He's audience and true, I... true, my brothers. And I my turn brothers to the audience and I scream, Nolianax. see, he's brought Nolianax here. He wants to take this position by force. Are you going to vote him in? Is this what we want, to live in fear again? And Hazar says, everyone, sit down. And if someone else has a question for one of the candidates, they may ask it. Yes, having Nully and X here is a surprise, but uh, Cassius had mentioned them, and so I think not too big of a surprise. So, uh, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Well, I think I speak for a lot of people and creatures here when I say that uh, this is a bit of a surprise, but at the same time, um, it seems to me like this is a, a marvelous uh, forethought of um, uh, organization, you might say. So, uh, Mr. Cassius, sir, could you please speak to this to me? Because, um, well, I'm, I'm kind of curious if, if these uh, individuals here were meant to uh, raise everything, as uh, this gentleman here has suggested. Um, what exactly, uh, what were you planning to do, or um, are you rehabilitating the, um, the reputations of these, uh, these creatures? Could you, could you explain, because uh, if, if you are attempting to rehabilitate these creatures, I applaud you, sir. Okay. I would like, are we still under duration? <laughs> May I answer for him? <laughs> how, yeah, how long has it been now? It's... You, know, you probably got an, another five minutes left. Okay. I'll say the, the Nullinax were created for a pure purpose, and I intend to keep them pure. He starts like there is no need for rehabilitation. To... <clears throat> he's trying to get rid of the the illusion of him speaking, and he's waving at his mouth, and 
and uh, he turns around and, and yells point of order at the at the group and she says yes and he kind of runs forward and says look I've they've someone has been ma- magically manipulating my answers I don't believe that for a second he's saying that to the to the council there oh. <clears throat> The man is clearly unhinged. He says, if anyone can dispel the magic, I would appreciate it. I want to subtly drop the magic, like so he doesn't does the check. Okay. Nothing there. <clears throat> he says, thank you. <clears throat> may I uh, may I repeat some of the answers that I was denied before? And Hazar says, "Yes, you can." So he goes back to the podium. He says, "Now, my answers were, like nip- to, were manipulated." I would like to subtle spe- use another sorcery point to sorcerer. Uh, basically, do the same thing again. <laughs> cast another major image as a subtle spell and kind of repeat the same answers. Okay, so he's going to run back over to the table and you'll see just the mouth sitting there talking while he's back over at the table. Well, I can use my action to follow him. And make yeah, him look you, natural. You, you, he has six seconds to do that before your turn, right? Sure, I guess if we're in combat, I kind of thought that meant implied you could just move it as things are moving in a natural manner. Well, he's trying to get out of it. I mean, I don't know how to yeah. resolve that. Then, I mean, you can't just say you automatically win, right? No, I guess, you know, I'm trying to keep on his mouth to probably be some sort of opposed, like, dexterity or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or well, we could deal with it as we will. Could do, we could do your arcana versus his dexterity. My hand is feeling pretty attracted to my silken sword at, right now. <laughs> <laughs> this may have just backfired. No, but I mean, like, if they brought Anolian Axe with them, they didn't intend to be peaceful in the first place. Yeah. Like hooded figures. Yeah. Okay. Let me just... uh, sorry, real quick question, though, for uh, Ryan. Um, are we? Do we know the other people that we're sitting with like fairly well? Like, are we able to talk amongst ourselves and maybe try to get these other people near us on our side? I probably know some of them. Happens? Yeah, like where's uh, Bentley? What's that? I think Bentley would be in the stands, right? Yeah, Bentley's there with you. I think he's the one sitting next to Ralph. Oh, he's that yeah. fuzzy oh, guy. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Does Ben does Bentley have a question? Well, so far this has gotten a little chaotic, so he hasn't gotten a chance to do his question yet. So anyway, what did what did you get for Arcana? Nine. Okay. <laughs> so he runs he, he dashes off and there's a mouse sitting there talking mm-hmm. while he's not there. Rats. No, no. Well, immediately immediately dispel and then just start squawking and try to get all the other girls squawking. Try to, yeah, try to <laughs> sing. <laughs> he says, we've been sabotaged. Yeah. My answers have not been my own. This has not been a fair election. <sighs> Darn it. Uh, Whatever, we've all heard that one before. <laughs> well, what was your intention bringing the Nullian in with you in disguise? Well, as, he's as just talking sneaking. to them to the council right yeah, okay 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 so talking. i can't hear it okay i'm just sitting down and uh they say okay we we must continue this debate without uh, influence without an- outside influence from the from the audience drovo are you causing this he says no ma'am i'm sorry i i had nothing to do with it Cassius, uh, you may reply to whatever you need to reply to. 
because I'm, I'm signaling to like Jonathan, like leave, leave. <clears throat> no, I remember I was flying around. I'm just calling. I'm trying to get all the seagulls out there. Uh, okay. Okay. And, and, uh, and, Cassius okay, is... so I guess. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna ask. Um, while they're discussing, should uh, our Jericho squad be discussing? Oh yeah, yeah. If you have anything that you want to say to each other, you can. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we'll huddle up. So, okay. Uh, okay. This plan seems to not be going at all. And what we, look, we thought. And we look like assholes. I don't care about that. Um, I, you know, I, I told Jonathan this wasn't a good idea that this could backfire on us. Um, no, but it's not his fault because they're the ones who brought in Nolianax but yeah, I mean, into I, a sacred space. They exactly. obviously are very disrespectful. I, I, you know, I mean, he, he brought them in in disguise. I mean, how are these people yeah. not surprised? I mean, uh, Ryan, how are the crowd reacting to this and with the revelation of Nolianax in them? Are they scared? Are they gasping? Are they like confused? What are they? Well, the Nellianax used to live amongst the population 30 years ago. I mean, they, they were, yeah, they were not, you know, they oh, were right. not yeah. like instant monsters all the time. Right, right. Okay. They were, they were, they were imposing and people were scared of them, right? Yeah. And people, people kind of would walk away from them. If they saw them, they'd cross the street to avoid them. But well, we haven't seen Nellianax in 30 years, right? Yeah. Well, I, they, they kind of react to him like, grumpy cops you know <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i know yeah. that anulianak was involved with the aboriginal children and i know that he you know he was involved in kidnapping my brother there aren't that many anulianaks around i mean i'm sure these are rare we thought they were all dead and now he has three i mean one of them had to be the one do i recognize one of the anulianaks is the one that i talked to at the compound where we rescued uh, my brother do I have Hard. to do a perception yeah, make, check? Yeah, make a perception check. Cause... Okay. I will do and a perception check. Is uh, Bentley going is... to be asking anyone a question? <laughs> yeah. I got 12. past the point of asking questions right now. Well, yeah, it doesn't sound like they're going to allow us to ask any more questions. Okay. 12 uh, on the it's, perception it's check. It's tough to say. It's been so long since you've seen them, and they, mm. all, they, they do look kind of similar to each other. Right, right. Um... Right. Well, would the council allow me to speak? Are you asking them right now? I mean, he, yes, he yes. was. The, okay, so they were. This was happening while, while Cassius was discussing with the council about how he's been. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So, what did the council say about Cassius? Is he going to be allowed to talk? Yeah, he. There, he's he's allowed to uh, to res to do over any responses that he wants to do over. Okay. So. so he says, I want to reiterate the thing that I was not allowed to say before, and that is that I do not condone kidnapping and that any kidnapping done by anyone claiming to be Aboriginal children is false, and those are not true Aboriginal children, and they're not adhering to the will of Hepexamendios. And he says now, um, I forget what was the other thing that, that uh, he was supposed to respond to. Uh, I asked him to uh, explain more about Aboriginal children. Like, oh, yeah. His definition. Right. And the Aboriginal children are all of us. Uh, we're all Aboriginal children if we have faith in our hearts towards Apexamendios. May I ask but the a true question? original uh, Apex, uh, the true original Aboriginal children are the Nullianax, and they will teach us. May I ask a question? Were, and Hazar says, "Were you magically influenced from your original question?" No. <laughs> and no. <laughs> okay. And uh, <clears throat> Bentley, may I, may I ask the Nullianax a question? This is not really the forum. Uh, I think I'd like to get, if if it's possible, I'd like to get back to the remainder of the debate, if we can. 
And uh, Bentley says, I haven't asked my question yet. <laughs> he says, Cassius, I thought we were friends and I feel betrayed. I feel betrayed by this kidnapping attempt. I feel betrayed uh, from you sabotaging and, and trying to cause my friends to die. And I don't know. I, I, I want you to explain that to me. And he, uh, he sits back down. Cassius says, Bentley, I'm sorry that I haven't had time to come and see you more often. And as to those other things, I don't know what you're talking about, but maybe if you kept better company, you wouldn't have these problems. An asshole. I say, what's that supposed to mean? I <laughs> whisper to, who well, I don't even know who I'm sitting next to. Chodavir. I'm sitting next to Chodavir. Okay, I whisper to Chodavir. What the flarp is that supposed to mean? <laughs> And I go like, here it comes. He's, he's probably going to mention Jericho. <laughs> and he sort of glares at, uh, at Bendley and at the rest of the group. Um, and Huzzah says, are, are there any other questions from the audience? I think in, you guys have all done your questions, right? Yeah. Did, did Zoe, did he get to answer your question or was that... Uh, Can you remind me again what, what yours was? Basically, I was kissing his ass. And, okay. uh, you know, as we planned. So I was just asking <clears throat> if he was, uh, if the reason that he brought those uh, those goons with him is basically because he was trying to rehabilitate the reputation. Oh, that's right, right. And, and then he claimed there was no need for re rehabilitation. Yeah. Oh, well, when I asked my question, he just started shouting hymns. So uh, he didn't really answer my question about the kid. Well, he did. He said nobody kidnapped anybody. And if they did, they weren't. Yeah. Real. Okay. One of the Nullian acts stands up. And it says, my question is for Drovo. Drovo, do you wish to destroy the Nelianak race? <laughs> Drovo says, I am for peace with any uh, creatures that wish to live in the Second Dominion or anywhere in the Imagica. And uh, Huzzah says, I think that uh, we could use, if anyone else in the audience wants to have questions for Drovo, we'll open it up because no one has been asking him questions really. So I'll let you do that. He hasn't really gotten to say much. Ooh. Walk. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, disclaimer, you know me. I'm the Arithmic, brother of Drovo Dovir. I'm sure Dovir. Um, I have one question to my brother. What, uh, you stand for peace. You stand for the continuation of the traditions that we do, you're real Aboriginal children. I mean, us Erythemex for a long time, people think that we're some, sometimes uh, segregationists or elitists, but we really just stick together because there's so few of us. We are the only remaining, uh, we are some of the only remaining uh, original inhabitants of the First Dominion. I guess my question is, why, um, 
what uh, what how can we uh, what do you have to offer uh, are you for a unified in magic it seems that that your opponent is not it seems that your opponent wants to create this nativist uh, outlook on the minions and the first dominion in particular he wants to bring a return to the tyranny of the autarch and the return of apexamendios i have no idea how he intends to do that because apexamendios is clearly gone but yeah so what uh i guess i lost my point uh <laughs> so anyway drovo you heard my you heard my question right so yeah yes yeah no i i, I understand brother um I, I believe in the in the reconciliation um i think that honestly that the uh, the fifth dominion is a little bit too cautious and they should open themselves up more instead of being uh filtered through um but that's how it is and and i understand and i would not stand in the way of how they wish to conduct their business uh as far as us i believe that this re reconciliation has been uh, a, a good one it's brought peace to this world for the past 30 years and for those of us who were there during the time of the autark it was a terrible time uh, it, it was it was awful i remember the Casperid right next to ours being destroyed for no good reason. I think that um, any any kind of I think that this this council uh, would sh would or should be opposed to any kind of attempt uh, to put the the power back into the hands of one man. And he looks over at Cassius. How is the and crowd Cassius reacting? is looking looking pretty mad. Yeah. How is the crowd reacting to this? Are they speaking? Are they murmuring? They're they're kind they... of they're kind of mumbling, okay, and agreeing. Okay. Can you make a make a persuasion check? Persuasion check. Will yeah. You? Persuasion check. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ah, oh, twenty one. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Yes, I got a, a B on the dice, and that's twenty plus one persuasion equals twenty-one. I dropped the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, yeah, Sean awesome. here. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> at this point, <laughs> I look around another... to everybody, and I just like, huh, huh, huh. One of the audience members gets up and says, um, Drovo, how do you respond to what Cassius said about about Hepexamendios and, and the one god and, and uh, him being at our back, having our backs? Do you feel that maybe we could have a powerful powerful ally again with Hepexamendios if, if for somehow somehow we could bring him back and drovo says um well that's a good question and for a long time i think all of us believed in Hepexamendios, but we prayed and we prayed and we had an autark that was tearing our lives apart uh, he was mad with power and crouchy and and uh, he he made he made life and death decisions on a whim, you know, for entire villages were destroyed. And um, and uh, so then he sits down here or he he kind of steps back. Anyone else have any other questions for Drovo? Does Drovo like dogs? Is that Ralph's question? Yes. Drovo says, what's a dog? 
They taste delicious. You like them. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, he says, I, I'm open to, uh, I'm open to <laughs> killer, killer, uh, culinary tips from the Fifth Dominion at any time. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have dogs in the second dominion damn i can't remember honestly yeah, yeah. they've got seagulls yeah. yeah i know there there were uh there were things that were gravelins right that are like rats right but right. i don't remember anything about dogs well uh i i suspiciously look over huzzah odell you said yeah yeah, I look at her and and try to remember who she's the daughter of, and I'm kind of drawing a blank. So, uh, make a history check. History check. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm a scholar. Holy yeah. moly! I got a twenty-seven. All right. Wow. Yeah, with a twenty-seven, uh, you know exactly who she is, uh, and and a lot of this, some of this is rumor, but uh, you're pretty sure that it's true that she's she the daughter Judith's of the daughter. Yeah, the daughter of Judith and the Autark. And so sometimes when people want to get under her skin, they'll call her princess, which she hates because she disavows the Autark. She's right. also the one. It's rumored that she's the one who released the waters of the goddesses into the first dominion and cleansed the, the decay from the from the dead Hepexamendios city god. Okay, well that's that's good to know. I knew I kind of recognized her. She um, was named after the Hazar of that uh, that w walked with the uh, the reconciler. May I address the table? May I address the council? Hazar says, yes, go ahead. I know who your parents are. And being in the Casperit, you know, having access to the library, I know what your parents went through and how at least your mother, um, who was, you know, involved in a strange relationship with your father, but how do you feel about the return of Apexamendios? How do you feel about what Cassius is saying? As well, I guess this can count as my closing statement uh, if, if we're done with the, uh, if, we're, if we're finished with, with the questions to the candidates. This will be my closing statement. I have a complicated family and complicated history. My father was the Autark, and people give me no end of grief about it. But let me tell you, my mother has ascended to goddesshood. Um, I believe that uh, the reign of the Autark, which was sanctioned by Hepexamendios, was a blight on this world. And I do not approve of any attempts to return the world to the way it was at that time. Excellent. Well so said. So my, my, uh, if I am to urge anyone to vote, I urge you to vote for another many years of peace and vote for Drovo Dovir. All right. I clap and I sit down. Uh, and then Acrete Friedley from Ephetoy uh, says honestly in my closing statement honestly I'm afraid of uh, a return like she said I'm afraid of a return to the ways of the Autark and a return to uh, the Hepexamendios turning a blind eye to our prayers. Honestly, I mean, he didn't do anything when we needed him the most. And as much as this other candidate seems to love him, I don't understand it. And I think it's because he was gone for 200 years that he didn't, uh, he didn't see what we were going through. Uh, I uh, urge you all to cast your vote for Drovo Dovir. 
Show us your birth certificate, Cassius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and Coaxial Tasco um, stands up and he says, I'm from Beatrix, like my good friend over there. And he points at, uh, at, at, um, dang, Nabbit, my brain just emptied. A crate? No, he points at, uh, in the audience, your, your friend. Oh, um, 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 Bentley? Bentley. He points at Bentley, yeah. And he says, like my friend Bentley over there. Uh, my, our village was destroyed by forces of the Autark. Beatrix. Um, only a couple of us left. That was a terrible time. I do not approve of any attempts to bring back any kind of, of uh, Autark system or uh, Hepexamendios. And uh, he sits down and then Ridley stands up and she says, honestly, the, uh, this sounds, sounds like a threat. And uh, I came here originally uh, believing that my old friend Cassius had everyone's best interest at heart. But now I see that I think he only has his own interest at heart. So I, I think, and I may, I may not have lived here in one of the old reconciled dominions uh, at that time, but, uh, but I, I know peace and I'm afraid. And I say to vote for Drovo Dovir. And uh, at this point, Cassius is looking around and he's really, really getting mad. And uh, he says, all right, well, I think obviously a council is not in what's in the best interest of the people or Hepeximendios. And I think it's time to dissolve it. Here we go. And uh, the, the, um, the, the Nullianax stand up and a creature rises up out of the water and uh, reaches tentacles towards uh, towards Drovo and uh, the Ethax are kind of running around trying to figure out what to do and we'll stop it there and we'll pick it up next time. Oh, oh <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> Did you see that coming? <laughs> wow. I'm sticking my hand in my pocket and touching a little spider. Like, wake up, buddy. Time to go. <laughs> yeah. I had spent all my third level spots getting him to say what he was going to say anyway. Yeah. I mean, we were race. discussing. Yeah. We were discussing a lot of stuff that we didn't know what he was going to say. And I was like, I, yeah. I honestly don't know. Yeah. I, uh, I really wanted Gabe to do this battle though. today, but it would t that would be like another three hours. Yeah. 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 Sorry. All Sorry, right, we all talk a lot. Too much we talking. debate a lot. This no, was great. Cool. I, I really enjoy the whole planning things out and you know yeah. even though I was like, I'm not sure what to do, but we, it's like, yeah. We had a whole bunch of sessions in in a in a dungeon, right? Basically fighting yeah. things. And mm -hmm. so now you finally got a chance for everybody to talk to each other. Yeah. I yeah, that, that was, was really cool. good. Having a couple of natural 20s also helped. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, was, that awesome. was awesome. Yeah, the one with the clutch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey. All right. Well, cool. This is a good cliffhanger to stop the episode yeah. in. Dang. Uh, no combat. And, and just the actual. audience members are just kind of running around screaming. See those One thing chaos. Jonathan can do, it's cause chaos. So, yeah, I Woo. guess I won in that regard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chaotic neutral. Mission Jonathan accomplished. Won. All right. All right. I knew my brother was going to come through. I knew it. And I knew it when I started appealing to the freaking council that they were going to like come through, especially Huzzah. I, she was a big, you know, character in the council. So I was like, yeah. yeah. And 
her grandfather is technically Hepexamendios. True. Yeah. The princess. Yeah, it was almost like you were you were campaigning instead of your brother. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, don't ask him questions. I have something yeah. to say. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, as soon as I saw the million X, though, I was like, oh shit, here we go. Yeah. Uh, I was right. Okay, cool. So we'll pick this up again on the next session of Jericho Squad 77. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, so we, we illustrator two, we want to get to, um, we've got an interview coming up, uh, second part, part two with Doug Bradley. That's right. Yeah. yeah. He, he told us, uh, November 27 would be a good time to talk. So, uh, looking forward to that. We're just finalizing the time. Uh, actually we did. Uh, yeah, we did yeah. finalize the time. So it's all good. Yeah. That'll be uh, later this towards the end of this month. Right. Yep. 27. Yeah. And then we've got a new, more news and uh, one more Jericho squad for this year. Yeah. The big battle. We're going to see <laughs> yeah. what's going to happen. This, Maybe this we'll will get be a, a good season finale. <laughs> yeah, that's what I I'm thinking. not going to feel as bad to like maybe bring out a certain scroll and sending, getting rid of like, uh, um, yeah. getting rid of this guy, Cassius. Yeah. He's a dick. Yeah. And I, I imagine Riley's doubts are assuaged. Assuaged. How do you say that? Sewage? I don't know. Yeah. But I can finally get to use hold person. It could be over six huh? seconds. Just hold person, grab them, throw them in. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got a whole bunch of spells so. now. <laughs> All right. And so, and so just one last thing is when, when, uh, uh, Gaustus, uh, yeah. when he said he was going to give me some of his power, uh, what does that mean in terms of my spells? Are they stronger? Take, take, uh, take you might want to look at, at, your, the mirror. at your character level. Okay. Yep. I'm yeah. Is he under your name mind. there? Yep. What does it say? Oh, <laughs> wizard six, warlock three, and I got 45 head points. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So you've got three levels of, of warlock. You have an infernal patron and you got a bunch of like ice based warlock spells. Hey, dealing with hell pays off. What can I say? Yeah. Okay. But it's cool. it's 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 lent, so you know it, it'll probably go away after this. Okay, uh, that that makes sense. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining us for this. It's uh, it was a great uh, session of like planning stuff up, and and uh, this was fun. Yeah, man. I hope to I hope to God this doesn't take fourteen hours to upload like the last. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. That was only a seven gigabyte file and it took me 14 hours. It's some kind of a problem with my internet service provider. Oh, man. And I was on the on hold with them like the whole weekend. Oh, man. oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it, may, it might be happening again. You can come in, baby. All right, guys. Well, you know, uh, yeah. enjoy the rest of your weekend. And this podcast having no beginning will have no end. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker Podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.